I'm playing Miko. Thank you, Daniel. I'm fucking nervous though, man. Are you a grandmaster? We're getting close. We're, we're knocking on the door. Only 2,000 more chess rating. Thanks, Goat. Is 2000 a lot in chess? It's about 20 years worth of perfecting and practice. Yeah, 2000 is a lot. To go from 1100 to 3000, that's like your whole life dedicated to chess. Yeah, it is fun, Kraken. Thanks to the resub scholar. I know who Jay and Silent Bob are. It's Clerks. Yeah, we watched it last night, Uzi. It's pretty wild. Oof. Getting fucking nervous, man. Thanks to the bits, Dong. I said 2,000 more rating, which would put me at 3,100. Also, 2,000 is literally, by definition, not trash level. 2K is fucking huge. At least the resub G Diddy. Play Miko's bot to get ready. Does she? Oh, she does have a bot. How do I play? Well, no, I'm going to keep this up. No, actually, I'll play Miko's bot. Where's her bot? I don't think I've ever played a bot. Is it on computer? Oh, here we go. Uh, this is this is fine. No, oh. not the not the right. That's dangerously close. I wonder if she's gonna push that up. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna develop bishop here, just out of curiosity. No, she didn't. I want to take up the center right. Why didn't she take back? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I gotta be honest, I don't exactly know what's going on, but I'll I'll take it. Uh This is so weird. Um, do I even want a castle? Or should I just immediately start looking for a mate here? Which I think I can get. Let's just, let's just go wild. Hmm. Damn, I can't push that yet. Damn.
Oh, I don't know why I did that. I tunnel vision too hard. Whoops. Seems fine to me. What should I take with here, bishop or knight? Or do I just want to deliver the check first? So many fucking options. I'm taking with the knight. That that's the one that makes the most sense to me. Uh It was mate. If I had taken there, that wasn't mate. Oh, it would have been actually, yeah, because this was cut off. You're right. Yeah. Damn, you were right. Now I can't do this because the bishop's there. So if I had just played that, that would have been mate. You're absolutely right. Put him back. Maybe she'll just repeat moves. Why can't I find this mate? This... How, what? Where the fuck is it? I feel like this should be such an easy mate, but I absolutely can't. I mean, it would have been if I had just taken, like I said, but I feel like I'm still missing it. I mean, I could just start taking pieces, but I'd much rather actually find this. Alright, let's just go wild. I uh, take here. He can't take. Well, I mean, he can take back, but. Can't do that because of the bishop still. If I can get that bishop off, though, what would be the next play? It's not gonna work. Let's just chase queen. Where was that fucking mate from before? And we are back with day three for Pod Champs 3, presented by Grip6. With me is the one and only, the man, him, the, the legend. I would say the myth, but you're the prophet. That's what you go by these days.
<laughs> I suppose I do. Well, it's an honor to be here, Danny. I'm so excited for these matchups. We've got some absolutely mouth mouthwatering matchups today. I can't wait uh, to dig into these games. But uh, right there with you, and it's it's uh, it's an honor as well. You're Grandmaster Daniel Nuraditsky, for those who don't know of the legend. But uh, we'll talk a little bit, of course, about why you were nicknamed the Prophet at some point on the show today, because fate would have it that uh, your your student is playing. So let's let's jump in and remind everybody of all 16 of the participants before we break down today's specific matchups. Uh, let me just ask you, Daniel. We're now three days in, and you've been watching as a fan, just like all of us. Has there been an exciting moment or an exciting player of all 16 of them in front of you that maybe caught your eye or surprised you at all with their with their strength? Well, I've been glued to the screen, Danny, and lots of these players, are they're so aggressive. Logic in particular uh, caught my eye, of course. There was a scare uh, that he survived with the mouse slip. And, uh, of course, Sardosh, the uh, legend of his work ethic, has gone the world round. Uh, so we'll be keeping a close eye on him. And of course, Mr. Beast, just uh, because of how huge he is, I'm just very curious to see how he'll handle the pressure of chess. And of course, XQC, he has improved tremendously. So I'll be excited to see how he, uh, his performance in, in PogChamp 3. So lots of players to uh, look out for and uh, very interesting game today as well. And of course, Moist, I'm yeah, not well, going to lie. I'm 100%. See and how Mr. Beast do. making his <laughs> debut today. Um, along with uh, along with Moise, his return here to PogChamp. So, uh, all right, yeah, we'll get into all that. Let's remind everybody of the format. You see, we still, we already got a lot of you hanging with us, whatever platform you're choosing to watch from. Thanks for being here. Uh, the format is, of course, four groups of four. The players will play a double round robin, which in chess terms means you play with each color, white and black. You get three points for an outright match win, two if it takes tie breaks to win, and then one point goes to the person who lost in tie breaks, Armageddon, if it goes to that. And of course, the top two players from each group advance to either the championship or top two advance to the championship bracket, the bottom two advance to the consolation bracket, and the bracket stage is single elimination. The prizes are bigger than ever, Danya. I know you got that memo, but it's 100K now, up from 50K here in the third edition. And even more importantly, we have a community element. We've been raising money throughout, and I'm sure we're going to hit our goal. I believe in it. Let's go ahead and uh, bring up the community graphic to remind everybody of where we stand currently, and we will uh, remind you of how you how you can get involved and help. We're also going to remind you where you can go to see the different charities that the players have chosen. A lot of you have been asking of that, and we'll let you know all the different charities uh, that you could donate for if your favorite player ends up winning. Uh, so, going to be awesome, Danya. The, uh, the charity element, I'm super excited to see where we get, and this is where we currently stand in terms of the groups and uh, what we've seen so far. Indeed, Danny, so much at stake here and love to see the community outreach as we have a bird's eye view of some of the matchups here. Uh, as we discuss so many interesting players, uh, these groups will be hotly contested and uh, that's going to continue with uh, today's matchups, Danny. Yeah, and let's uh, let's look at that. So as you said, we've got Code Miko, uh, the VTuber, rocking the first match of the day versus Moist Critical. Uh, Charlie is, is uh, one of the fan favorites for crazy moments in the first Pog Champs, and he's back here in Pog 3, and it's going to be awesome to see. I know I, you mentioned XQC, of course, who has improved a ton. We know that Charlie has also improved a ton. Budwig was streaming a bunch of chess last night. That matchup versus him and Mr. Beast is, is, is frankly, I think uh -oh. what most people are super <laughs> pumped to see today. That doesn't take anything away from anybody, but it's uh, partly because of their, their banter, and we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, in fact, right there. In fact, Donya, did you see this go down on Twitter just moments ago between Mr. Beast and Ludwig? <laughs> I did not, Danny. Am I reading this right? I'll give you 10,000 if you do. So what is, hope you don't mind me taking your kick today. These are some fighting words, Danny. They're getting into it before the first move is made. That's what I love to see. I love it. They've been getting into it all, all I guess, lead up to the event. They've had some, they've had some pretty funny moments back and forth. And uh, I, I think Lud is serious. We know that he throws money down sometimes, although we also know that he says things that are completely ridiculous like the fact that he goes to chess.com to beat the Danny bot. And you are welcome, Blood, to upload that on Twitter the moment you uh, show that you, you beat the Danny bot anytime, buddy. All right, but moving on, let's remind everybody of another huge event coming up <laughs> with our partners at Twitch. On March 2nd, it's our next Twitch Rivals and chess.com partnered event. This time it's going to be hand and brain. It's going to be awesome. They've just announced that the next Twitch Rivals will be featuring 
Some of your favorite creators, Ludwig, Boy Boy, the Botez Live, Hikaru, they're playing hand and brain. And I actually have a real time update from one of the leads at Twitch right now uh, that it's actually $35,000 in prices, not $25,000. And uh, it will take place on March 2nd. I can't wait. Um, and uh, I think I think you might be there as well, Danya. Have, were you, were you, are you involved in that? Uh, I think so. I mean, I'll definitely uh, make time. And I love hand and brain. It's, it's such a good spin on the game and it always results in, in really, really fun chess. So I'm really looking forward to that, Danny. That'll be March 2nd, 1 p.m. Pacific start time. I can't wait for that either. Yeah, it's, it's going to be epic. Hand and brain is so much, so much fun. You pair different levels of chess and, uh, and then let the cards fall where they may. Before we jump back into today's specific matchups, another shout out to Gaiaki Yurumate. Of course, we want to take a moment to thank our sponsors, all of our sponsors for PogChamps to be presented by Grip6. But right now, talking about Gaia Key as they celebrate 25 years of your favorite regenerative Yerba Mate. They're sharing cases to celebrate. Spam the Gaia Key emote in chat for your chance to win. And we will be back after, after a very quick break to start the first matches of the day. Four pillars of regeneration to heal all nations. We work with and not against. Because we are a part of this, we've never been apart from this. Our hands feel through the soil's pass, our feet touch on the blades of grass. Braid all these voices into a beautiful tapestry, find those similarities we all share in these breaths that we breathe. This home of ours sustains us but needs us, so together we'll move through this long night and inspire us all to come to life. game with time to think but honestly 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 guys chess is just a game anyway it doesn't it doesn't mean anything <laughs> it, it doesn't mean anything okay chess is just a game um it's not like everyone's gonna remember this game <laughs> i mean probably people probably won't to be honest people probably really won't We will, all right, my, my chat might. But, 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 you know, but, you know, the, the rest of the world won't. So, you know, it'll be like, it'll be like it never happened, okay? If nobody remembers it, does it mean it actually happened? Oh, oh, if no one remembers it, does it actually mean it existed? All right, guys, I'm gonna get ready for ultimate humiliation. Although I am into it. I am into it. So uh, maybe maybe it's, it'll be a fun thing. Um, all right, let's see. Discord. Okay. Okay, log in to... Okay, got it. Whoa! One big mic gifting 10 tier 1 subs. Lucky subs for play. For we currently definitely need... We definitely need it. I am at chess.com slash live, Mr. Chess. Thank you, thank you. Slight delay, three more minutes. Ah, three more minutes. Ah. Charlie will destroy you. I'm into it. I'm into it. Destroy me, Charlie. Make me feel you wrecking my pieces. This is the most action I've gotten in the last eight months. The last three weeks. Do it. Wreck me. I can't wait. What do you mean out of context? What? Why are you guys weird champing? 
Your odds? Wait, wait, what is your odds? What, what is my odds? Wait, tell me my odds. What was it? What? My odds are 1 to 23. You guys, if you bet on me and I win, you'll become a millionaire. Do you know that? If you just bet $100 on me, you will get <laughs> 23... 100 times 23. 20... 100 times 23. 20... 23... <laughs> 23... $2,300! The f*** is gone! Oh my god! Holy Oh my god, this is insane. Oh, yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! That's what it's all about! Woo! Magic time. Watch that video. Video all day. I know what's going on in your head. Bob your head. It's all right. Pretty good hype video. I was that was awesome. I was vibing to that. But I'm gonna be vibing to the games too. Well, the games are about to start any second. The uh, the team is ready. The players are ready. We saw uh, Code Miko talking about how if someone had just put a hundred bucks on her, maybe they'd become a millionaire when she when she wins the whole thing. So she was fun to talk trash. Apparently, she's an underdog. I didn't even know that. But uh, this is gonna be. This is going to be awesome here, and uh, the game should be beginning shortly. So, you know, you know Charlie better than anyone here at the Chess.com streaming community. How how uh, how pumped is he to be back here uh, in Pog Champs? And and uh, what what chances you give him to maybe be one of the better players? He's definitely pumped. That I know. He's also definitely nervous. And I always point this out: these uh, stars, these streamers, they are used to broadcasting to millions and millions of people, Danny. But there's something about sitting behind a chessboard, be it a virtual chessboard or a real chessboard, that brings out all the anxiety. And I actually really like that. So Charlie, he's experienced; he knows what this is like. At the same time, uh, we're going to watch his time consumption, and uh, yep. I don't know too much about Code Miko, but I think she's put in the work. Well, right now she started out pretty, pretty. Well, she played some natural developing moves, right? I mean, this is um, not the most traditional approach against a Sicilian, and, and Charlie handles it like a pro with e6 and d5. But but there's some risk in an opening like this. If if Miko can can play aggressively in the center early on, maybe she'll maybe she'll be okay here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, she needs to strike in the center d4, uh, get her pieces out quickly. Rookie one, she goes d3. She's doing everything right, preparing the development of her dark squared bishop and Charlie quickly focusing on getting that king to safety uh, by castling. Yeah, bishop e7, supernatural move. But this is this is a great start. I mean, even though we were saying d4, I actually kind of like that she played d3 because it protects against c4. Maybe maybe she, she would have got her bishop trapped. So this is some really awesome principled chess. She's bringing out her pieces. And all right, now I'm nervous. I'm excited. I'm excited too. This is great. And they're both getting their pieces out, doing everything right. Miko brings her last piece out. Charlie still has that dark uh, light squared bishop to bring out, uh, which he can put on a bunch of different squares. And um, they are following the fundamentals to the letter, Danny. Yeah, and you know, something about the way she's playing too, just the tempo of it, right? Even if this is the most, the most traditional approach against Charlie Sicilian, she's playing all these developing moves with confidence. If you look at the fact that she has nine and a half minutes, so I'm going to do the early kind of Hikaru call to action and just say, I, I kind of think she's underrated it at 333. He tends to kind of look at the ratings and see how they play. And I, I, I would say now that she's probably underrated at 300. She absolutely is. And I completely agree with you. Just by these first moves, uh, she's showing complete command of the fundamentals. And uh, you don't do that, you know, if, you're, if you've had one chess lesson. So she's definitely been putting in the work. Now, Charlie... 
Um, I'm going to be straight up with you, Danny. He, he has a big weakness in terms of his time consumption. Uh, when he's playing casually, uh, he, he plays confidently, but when he's on the big stage, sometimes he freezes. So we'll see whether he can, uh, he can control that here in this game. Well, we're going to throw to him right now for the first time today and see what Charlie's thinking about. Or not thinking of. I'm not going to do anything too crazy here. He's ruminating. Deep in his thoughts here, Danya. So deep, he can't express them. <laughs> so deep, he can't express them. Wow, he's not usually this silent. <laughs> You're telling me, uh, like you said, you you know him well, and he's nervous. Um, he's obviously got I'd like okay to trap position. this bishop. See what he's considering by by what he's doing with the pieces and where he's moving his mouse. Um, but uh, but I think she's going to want to take mm -hmm. to double my pawns. Yeah, he's that's a pretty high level thinking. He sees that Miko probably wants to take that knight. I don't remember if we care about doubled pawns in this line or not. That's also high level thinking right there because it is recognizing it and then using I'm taking too to long already. Right. I'm just going to say we don't wow, care about doubled pawns and go Whoa. for it. What's going on? What? Yep. Uh, did that just oh. happen? Let's Let's come back here to the main board. And I, she well, played bishop f4 <laughs> in point one. I'm pretty sure she had accidentally clicked it for a pre move, it, or she, or she was pre moving, which would be you know kind of a surprise, kind of uh, you know high level play there for her to pre move and and maybe not a very smart one with with Charlie playing b5. But let's throw to code Miko now for the first time and see what she's thinking about. It's okay. It's fine. Oh my god, here he comes. Here comes the pummeling, guys. Um, <laughs> the pummeling I have not been looking forward to. But kind of, yes. Oh, Jesus. Both That's so scary. Oh, All right, well, uh -oh. I guess we'll have to. Oh, no, Jesus, that's not to. good. Um, um, you know what? You know what, guys? You know what? I'm just... Suspense. I'm just gonna go... Here. Not a great move. Yeah. Uh, hey, more than six moves, move, okay? Please. Charlie does it quickly. Alright. Now Queen takes knight. And that's what she's missed. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> shut up, guys. Mm -hmm. shut, up. Shut, up, shut 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 up, okay? <laughs> oh, I got you. Uh, oof. <laughs> She's just playing so fast. That's that's the thing that I would oh. advise her. Yep. Oh, and I guess I also did not see oh. that. Oof. Shut up! Shut up, everyone! Oh wait, what? <laughs> oh, I didn't even see. Oh, I didn't even see. Hey, you know what, guys? You know what? We we did it. It was more than six moves. That's that's for sure. Um. Uh, she, and she did, she did good. That, by, by her saying that makes me feel like she just kind of knew she was the underdog. But the truth is, her position, she was doing well if, if maybe she just slowed down a little bit, right? I think it started here with her pre-moving bishop f4. And then, obviously, the wheels kind of come off pretty quickly from there. So I think that sometimes the players come in, Donya, and they're just a little baby, a little psyched out. And that, that definitely feels like one of those, which is unfortunate. Because I think, I think she showed some things that were better than where this game ended so quickly.
Absolutely. And her development was on point. She showed an ability to see where the pieces belong. And she responded to threats. When Charlie attacked one of her pieces, she moved it back. Yep. Uh, but I completely agree with you. I think the issue was that pre-move and, as you said, the wheels came up. When you blunder a piece, it can be so disheartening. And even subconsciously, you can sort of lose lose your ability to approach the position objectively. But still, definitely impressive stuff in the opening. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and um, obviously, we're always surprised and not surprised with Pog Champs games and things that happen sometimes. But I think that where this game started, Dylan, yeah, I'm surprised it ended the way it did. That's what I'm that's what I'm gonna say. Do you do you agree with that? Completely agree. And I think uh on move eleven, she probably should have followed through with uh capturing Charlie's knight just so that her bishop doesn't get trapped. And uh right. I think you know, sometimes these players just a little bit of confidence is lacking in following through on their ideas, but by and large, uh, you know, she's gonna hold her head up high. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and you're right. So right here, she played Bishop A4. As Charlie was saying, we were listening in. Maybe she wants to take my knight and double the pawns. But then, then she kind of left that plan behind. And we see the eval bar reveal exactly how the computer feels about that. B5. And, uh, you know, at this point, while Bishop A4 was a pre-move, as you're saying, the bishop is already trapped. And, and so the game was, in theory, you know, grandmaster level chess. Black is already winning. And, but, but I think that it's, it's less about that. I think it was more indicative, like, right here. I think sometimes one of the things that we learn as you get better at chess, like when a player attacks, you don't always have to meet fire with fire, right? So, so a retreating move is sometimes in order, but, but it feels like, no, 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 that, that, then that means I'm losing, right? But then by definition, you play the really aggressive move and lose. And, and that's kind of kind of what happened here because mm -hmm. the wheels came off super quickly. And shout out to Charlie, though. I mean, I guess, obviously, he's doing what he came to do. Getting some dubs in uh, Pog Champs three presented by Grip Six and uh, and here we go, man. What how, what do you think your students feel right now? What would you be advising him to stay focused? Yeah, definitely, he's got to stay focused, keep the foot on the gas pedal. It's a two game match, and uh, it can be devastating to lose the second game after winning the first. Uh, so you know he's got to reorient him, reorient himself. And there were uh, points in this first game where I think he took a little bit too much time. So he can quickly go over that and sort of figure out where he could have played a little bit faster, but right. uh, he's got to refocus and, uh, he's, you know, still, you've got to take your time. It's very important not to make any sloppy free moves. But right. you sound like a coach who's almost just hoping he's watching you right now. But okay, so <laughs> speaking of the fact that there is a next game, there's actually a lot of games still coming up here in Pog Champs. So uh, if you haven't already, grab your, grab your phone right now. Everyone's got some sort of Google Calendar sync these days and type it in. And, you, you know, you cancel the dentist appointment and you, and you add, oh, oh yeah. I got to be here. I got to be here uh, on Wednesday the 17th for XQC taking on Pokemon. So uh, there's the schedule, at least for the what's upcoming. What's a dentist? <laughs> Sorry, say that. Say that again. What's a, what's a dentist? Yeah. A point well, what is Come a dentist? On. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. who, needs, who needs teeth, right? Oral hygiene. Like, yuck, right? Okay, here we go. That was weird. And it's February 18th. We've got uh, uh, only two matchups, but they are big ones. We've got Michelle Care versus Logic. Then we've got Rain versus Tubbo. Um and the games, the games continue right there before you. The bracket stage, uh, or sorry, the, the group stage comes to an end on the 21st, and we will have our first rest day, uh, a break day for us to kind of work with all the players and the streamers and their busy schedules and, and make sure that things are lined up for the bracket stage to begin on February 23rd. And on that note, this will be how it looks, right? You, you have the players put into seedings accordingly based on how they perform here in the groups. And we play until we have a Pog Champs winner. Pog Champs three presented by Grip Six. Now the winner's going to get a belt. Can I like show the belt right now? Is that against our sponsor? Ooh. We got to see it. You, I mean, am I allowed to? I'm asking. For, I, I do things all the time that get us in trouble, and then get DMs and say, "No, Dan, Dan, you weren't supposed to do that." There it is, baby. Oh man. Yeah, it's sweet. That and is it awesome. Feels good. It's, it's not just a trophy. It's titanium I like, I like enough it. to hold up a fat guy's pants. And then you just right there. So mm -hmm. whoever gets this, I think that I think that they will be streaming with it behind them for the rest of their streaming career. The Pod Champs belt is pretty awesome. It is. You can't just leave that anywhere. It has to occupy the central place uh, in the stream. That's awesome, Danny. I like it. It's not just a trophy. It's creative. It's not just a trophy, right? It's a belt. Why don't more chess tournaments have belt, right? I mean, UFC's been doing it. You know, heavyweight wrestling. I miss Hulk Hogan. I miss you, Hulk Hogan. Okay, moving on to the bots. Let's remind you, you can play <laughs> bots, uh, whether you're into playing VTubers or um, 
people who claim to be bots that they could never beat, like Ludwig. Go beat Ludwig's bot. In fact, if anyone beats Ludwig's bot and tweets it at me with like a funny phrase, I'm going to choose one today and just give away a one-year diamond membership because it makes Ludwig's day bad and makes me happy. It's a win-win. Makes the moment I heard makes you happy. I was going to do it, but you know, Danny, you dissuaded me from it. Why'd you have to say that? Jokes aside, jokes aside, we're going to take our first break of the day. When we come back, it's game two, Code Miko versus Moist Critical. Don't go anywhere, Pog Champs 3 presented by Grip6 when we return. Burger tier list win? Eh. I'm trying not to do too many food tier lists. I've been doing a lot of food. How many games have you won in chess in total? I don't know, man. I've played so, so, so many games of chess. I have no fucking idea. I have no goddamn clue. Still Miko. We play we play more. Thanks to the Prime, Kevin. In the Prime X. The t uh, we're doing a baby food tier list. I think that's the next one, but I'm trying not to do too many food ones. I really wanted to do the edible asshole tier list, but the only one that was up to up for it was pay money wubby. So I mean I can't just like tier list one asshole. I need more. Thanks to the resub, just Joe. In the prime, Amen. You're live on chess? Like, right now? Like, they heard my... Okay, if we're live on chess right now, don't steal my edible asshole tier list, please. I'm still trying to get more people for it. I saw Ludwig say he'll do it. I just need, like, six or seven people. Of my friends. Not random people, because I already know they're just going to send me, like, dirty asshole mold. Thanks to the two gift subs, Sensei. In the prime juice box and the resub salad. Hey, to tie it back into chess, yeah, I could try a bunch of Grand Masters chocolate buttholes. It's a it's a company that does them. So you mold you mold your asshole with some alginate, you send it in, they turn it into chocolate, and I can just try different buttholes and see which Grand Masters taste the best. It could be a whole chess.com event. You've seen the Grand Masters, but how do they taste? Thanks to the resub Myers and the gift sub Pog in the prime Ezraj. Think positive, you got this. Ah, yes. Positive thinking can achieve the impossibles. Be positive. Are we positive thinkers? Are we positive dreamers? Do we dream or do we meme? We do both. When we dream and meme at the same time, there's nothing we cannot do. We can achieve everything. We are clock positive. Together. Damn, when is when is it gonna start? Ah, we still have a few minutes. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Six move. Uh, more than six move. Let's go.
<sighs> let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey. And we are back. Pog Champs 3 presented by Grip6. You heard it. You heard it from Code Miko. If you dream and meme, anything's possible. Dreaming and memeing together is a win. So Lily Day, it's a two-game match. She's pumping herself up. We saw some signs of mastery in game one. So uh, this match is far from over. All right. Well, the games are going to begin any second. We'll see what, uh, what Code Miko does with the black pieces. Obviously, Charlie will have white. I like that dream and meme. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal that one for later. Um, but uh, anyway, thanks for being with us, no matter where you're tuning in from. Here we go. It's going to be an awesome day. We got Mr. Here Beast, Ludwig up ahead. We got crazy stuff. Charlie plays E4. Here we go. And an E5 from Code Miko and the Vienna Gambit is what Charlie has been playing over the last couple of weeks. So that's where White goes F4 pretty quickly, but here he develops his bishop. Yeah, this is a really aggressive line, right? Obviously, when you play F4, at some point, the F file will lead with a rook and bishop having a date right there on F7, or at least they hope to. The pressure becomes very, 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 very strong very quickly, depending on whether Black knows what to do. So uh, Miko already given it a think right here. Right, it's not the most common opening, which is part of the reason that uh, it's very effective, because if you can get your opponent out of their comfort zone pretty early, and you know the ideas, you get a pretty big edge on the clock, and often that translates into an advantage over the board. Right. Well, now already, White has the option to play F4, and you can also play D3 if you still want to sort of slow jam the mm -hmm. idea. Um, of course, you always have the option of going back into a more traditional, kind of whatever that would be, Two knights, four knights, uh, uh, but no. As we already we already know, because uh, because we have the prophet here. F four is Charlie's weapon. What do you think <laughs> is going to happen at some point in the event when he plays against someone who's prepared for his Vienna? How's that going to go? Well, he's going to have to tighten up the screws. Because the thing with these openings, right? If they work out for you, you can score some quick victories. If you mess up the move order, you mess up one move. It's a double sided sword, and you can get in trouble pretty darn fast but yeah. uh, so far charlie's showing nice command of the principles getting rid of the pin immediately yeah and the risk as you said because if it goes Ooh. wrong what you've done is open up a lot of dark squares but okay here we see an example of how it goes right a lot a lot of times people don't really realize how aggressive this line can be and, and just like that your bishop is trapped yeah, Code Miko, Bishop trapped on one side of the board, and now it's trapped on the other side of the board in the other game. And she does the right thing, giving it up for a pawn. If you're losing a piece, you want to give it up for as much as possible. Yeah, she takes it. That's a good oh. move. And I and I again I think the only mm -hmm. thing I would say is obviously it's hard, you know, when you when you feel like you're playing a, a stronger player. But I think that she maybe, like we said in game one, thinks she's a little worse than she is and and is playing kind of too fast. If she if she slows down a little bit. You know, um, the, the openings she's had are very principled, right? She's gotten pieces out. She, she understands all of those, all of those development kind of ideas. And we'll see if she gets castled here. It's the king out of the center. Yeah, she's, she's developing all her pieces. And you can't say it enough. It's not that easy to get into a situation where you have command of the principles. And that's exactly what she has. Uh, maybe, again, maybe taking a little bit more time would have been good. But these unconventional positions, they can be hard to get your footing in. But other than that, you know, you could confuse your play for that of Magnus or maybe Gary Kasparov. Yeah, I mean, what would Gary Kasparov think about this position? Hmm, well, if only we had him on the show. But Danny, Tim, this reminds me of the match against Anatoly Korpov. You know, and uh, in that match, you know, it was uh, back and forth, you know, back and forth game. But Tim, go to Miko, you know, she, she knows... Um, <laughs> How to develop her pieces, you know, but um, like a good Russian schoolboy, you know. <laughs> do you think do you think good Russian schoolboys, but Gary? Sparm's a busy would, man. <laughs> would, would good Russian schoolboys appreciate the VTuber experience, you think, Gary? And it, <clears throat> you know where I come from, you know, it's um, the VTuber, you know, I'm old school, you know, I like uh, flip phones, you know, notebooks, you know, but um, <laughs> I can definitely appreciate, you know, the, the sort of the rise, you know, the AI and, you know, I've spoken about it, you know, in, in colleges and you know, before, but um, overall, you know, I'm quite uh, approving of, you know, this trend. <laughs> okay, there you go. Thank you, Gary. Uh, we'll we'll uh, maybe check in with you a little bit later. All right, look at this move, knight h5 from her. 
Hun Miko Absolutely. puts that in on H5. It opens up the check, and we see Charlie make his first kind of odd move of the day. Let's listen into Code Miko and see if she sees the check and what she can do here. Drawing is important, but that's going to get that guy. So then you... Uh, no, I want to I wanna get rid of some of my... Some of my pieces are so stuck. And, uh, duh. That knight on H5. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, fuck. I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to... Okay, 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 okay. Wait, 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 wait. I get what he's trying to do. All right. Wait, why can't I do this? Um, I'm confused. Um, on that everyone, camp. don't worry. Don't, don't panic. Don't panic, everybody. Don't panic, okay? Don't panic. Don't panic. Nobody panic. It's okay. Nobody panic. I'm, I'm not either. Nobody panic. Uh, nobody <laughs> We're not panic. I still calm, don't calm. understand why I can't move this. But, um, nobody panic. Stop panicking. Okay. Stop yelling. Danny, why Stop are you panicking, panicking Danny? Stop Danny, panicking. why are you panicking? Okay, Queen D7. And, and backing up a couple moves, it actually is unfortunate mm -hmm. that she just didn't realize. Knight h2 was played quickly by Charlie, but probably a little too quickly because he, you know, if she had played the move bishop h4 check, mm -hmm. right? Right, and that would have forced the king to move, and when the king has to move this early, Danny, it can land in some danger. Yeah, there's, uh, there's knight g3 coming, oh. there's all kinds of stuff happening, so... Um, okay, she played knight a5 as right. we saw instead and uh, lost the knight, and now we'll see if Charlie can see how dangerous the G-file is. The uh, Peter's actually announcing mate in six, but let's see what Charlie sees. Yeah, and, and what you can see here, white is up two pieces, and there's also this G-file. White's got a rook positioned and facing right at black's king, and that pawn that is covering the king is very flimsy. You can attack that pawn with a variety of pieces. You can bring your bishop out all the way to h6, and the pawn can't could capture just push the bishop because it is pinned to the king. Yeah, the oh. he's not he's not talking. I don't about know how best to approach this freedom. mate. This is something I also need to work on. I see a lot of different mating options here. I see a fucking ton of mating options. <laughs> I just don't know like <laughs> the best and fastest way of doing it. <sighs> I mean, like I could literally drop queen back. I could push queen up. Because this is pinned. She cannot take. I'm just going to push it up. That's the best move. That's the fastest mate. Got it. He's it. He's hesitating, though. And he's, he's done it. Queen is untouchable because of the pin. To me, that looks okay. If she comes here, I can just take the bishop. If she pushes wow. this up, I do the original plan. Seeing things very clearly. Yeah, that's impressive. That's if an she impressive breaks move. the pin, it's made. Using the pin. He's nervous. He's worried there's a defensive resource somewhere, but there isn't any. Do I want to just take, take that, that with, with any of the three pieces, actually? Let me see. Doing her best, block the G file, but unfortunately, it's just hold the pin. Uh oh, yep. Now it's and now it's made on G seven. And there it is. Wow, that was a okay. commanding attack there by Charlie. I had a lot of different options there. 
I had a fucking ton of options. I just didn't know how to best approach it in the fastest way. I feel like I had a faster option. Uh, I just don't know what it was. You actually, you actually did. didn't. You actually did have a faster option. So, um, he did no, not. Real, <laughs> real talk. He was. He was awesome. Um, I mean, we can we can roll through it real quick. The computer was first pointing. I mean, really, Night H two was um, was less than ideal of a move, right? If if uh, mm -hmm. Black is still down a piece, but if if Miko had seen Bishop H four check, the game could have been very different, right? Um, one thing you one thing you noted is that um, again, players as they as they gain experience sometimes are just looking after you do the basics of development, like what's a one move threat I could play. So she she was feeling cramped and was kind of looking for her next threat, but they but they don't always see the threat for their opponent coming, right? And that's that's where this backfired. And right here after Queen D seven, it's already a forced mate. Was there anything fancier he could have done besides Queen H six? I don't think so. I don't think so either. You could have sacrificed the rook on g7, but that was counterproductive because you want to keep the rook. It's the main attacker. You could have also brought the bishop to h6, but queen h6 was both the most elegant move and the fastest checkmate. And that's an area where Charlie has improved tremendously, Danny. That area, he was unsure, but his intuition indicated the best and fastest way to mate. Yep. Well, rook takes g5, and uh, yes. this is this is this was already already over, and so. So, Owie, Owie, I guess. Uh, ouch town. I yeah. I mean, as I said, good. Miko's going to hold her head up high. She's doing a lot of things right, and she's going to keep improving. Yeah, and I think that, again, sometimes in the, in the, early, the early rounds, right, you're, you're kind of, everyone is sort of figuring out the strength of the players, and I think that uh, Code Miko, if and when she hooks up with her coaches, will be told, like, hey, you weren't doing bad. You got all your pieces developed. Right, just focus on mm -hmm. a little more emphasis on your opponent's threats and slow down just a little bit. Right, I think that that would probably be the advice we would want to give her. And I'm being given uh, and told the cue that it's time for us to take a break before we are joined by our players for an interview. So don't go anywhere. Interviews with Moist Critical and Code Miko when Pog Champs Three, presented by Grip Six, returns. Three would mean a lot if you checked it out. I'll check it out, bud. You get $3,000 if you get dead last. Thank you, Polite, for the host, brother. 3K if you get dead last. If you lose every single game for about maybe three hours of your time, two hours of your time, $1,000 an hour. That's not bad. That's not bad. 1K an hour. That pays for, like, one of Code Miko's cogs. All right, what do we got? Oh, fuck, it's on me. Hey, uh, what's up? Uh, um, I don't know, you guys don't have a name. What's up, chess.com? Uh, are you guys wondering why watch, uh, why would one player want to play a game when they get shit on? <laughs> we make $3,000 if we lose every game. It's $1,000 an hour to be a loser. It's the greatest deal of all time. I don't think that you get a lot of money when you lose most of the time. I don't know. Somebody asked the New York Jets. I'm not aware. Perhaps the Knicks might have more information on this fact. All I'm saying is that's a pretty sweet deal. Anyway, if you guys don't know, um, chess.com that is, uh, check this out. Mr. Beast tweeted at me this afternoon and he said, hope you don't mind me taking your king today. And then in a spout of courage and stupidity, I tweeted, I'll give you 10,000 if you do thinking that he would be like, yeah, you know, because it's Mr. Beast. He'd be like, yeah, let's put 10K on it, thinking I could get, like, a free 10K. And then he just followed up and said, um, I'll take it in Bitcoin. Um, so he didn't really hold up his end of the bargain there. I thought that was going to be – I thought it was going to be like, you know – yeah, let's do it to a 10K grudge match. I don't even know what it means. He said takes your king. Does that mean beats me in the whole set? Or if he wins one game, do I do I give 10K? If he wins two games, do I lose 20K? We don't know the specifics. 
stressed out, man. I'm stressed out. <sighs> we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Dream is streaming. React and get free clout. Genius. What the fuck? And then, on top of that... Dude, fuck Twitch. On God, I hate this fucking website. I started streaming like three years ago. And I wanted to be the biggest streamer. And back in the day, it was like Soda Pop. And he had like 25k. He had like 70k once with an unboxing. He was like the biggest stream ever. Now, fucking Tommy and its dumbass gets like 100k natty doing whatever the fuck. I'm out here starving, trying to get 20k viewers, doing whatever I can, putting up 10k for fucking diddly squat. 53k on Shroud for crumbs. Crumbs. What happened to Twitch, bro? It used to be so easy. How am I supposed to get the biggest on Twitch, Jay? It's impossible. I don't know. I don't know. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it here. What is the point? I'm your crumb. Thanks. Thanks for the crumb of cooch chat. I appreciate it. But goddamn, has my dream died with Dream SMP being the actual murder. Ironic. Dream killed my dream. Anyway, um, if you guys could all consider starting, I think the best way to grow is for everybody to live tweet my stream. So if you guys could hop on Twitter. Um, oh my God, can't believe Ludwig uh, said that. And then you have to like basically clickbait people who follow you to be like, what'd they say? Okay, you guys are just saying no. All right, I'm just gonna on three minutes of ads. <sighs> well, they did a countdown on chess.com. I was hoping it would leak. And we are now joined by Miko and Charlie. After this first match on day three of Pog Champs, uh, great games, great games, guys. Uh, Miko, we I wanted to look at the chess because we were listening in on you during during some of the games, and there were some moments where it felt like maybe you thought your position was worse than it was, and maybe we could look at some of this and and go over some tips for the future if that's okay. Yes, please. Okay, cool. So in this position here, you actually had a great opening to start. You developed all your pieces and got castled and. Even Charlie was recognizing when you played Bishop A4 that maybe you had a plan to double his pawns. And then right here, it, it felt like you started playing really fast on the clock. Your next couple of moves were with the bishop on this side of the board. And that's where, I, obviously, we can see oh. how the computer feels about it. That's where it kind of started to go haywire, and, and you got your bishop trapped. So take us through what your thought process was once you got your pieces developed, and what are you thinking about for future games? Um. Well, I... I accidentally misclicked, and mm -hmm. I did a pre-move, and I didn't know that was a thing uh, on chess.com. That's so... what I hypothesized as well. I yeah. said, there's no way that's code Miko. She's too smart for that. Yeah. Well, not, I'm not exactly, I mean, but yeah, there, I misclicked, and then I also accidentally hit the back button, so I almost left the game, too. Oh, got Ooh. it. Mm. Yeah, that's what we were thinking as well. OK. So um yeah. That's awesome news because it, that's what we were wanted. We wanted we wanted to go over it and, and give advice because <laughs> your position was great. Um did you think about when you played Bishop A4, were you thinking about taking the knight here? Yep. Of course I was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a good idea to double Charlie's pawns, and then your bishop wouldn't have landed in as much trouble. Right. And then perhaps you could have attacked that pawn by shifting your knight over to the center. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, the this this game this game ended up um you know like we said it started out really well and even this one here there was a position right here Charlie I don't know if you know when you played knight h two which obviously had this threat if Miko had played bishop h four check this could have got a little spicy Charlie did you did you see this idea coming? Uh, that's definitely not where I wanted to put the knight. I just didn't know the right square for it and I was trying not to Got overthink it. it. Yeah, I definitely didn't see that though. Wait, I had a free knight grab. 
Not so much that, but more that you could have uh, weakened White's king. Because when you give a check this early, it forces the king out into the open. Yeah. And then you can follow up by shifting your knight into g3 with another check. And it's not terrible for White, but it, it creates uh, some, you know, some, some unbalanced uh, situation here. Oh my God, I'm learning so much. Well, and it felt like maybe maybe the takeaway too is is obviously you, you did a great job in both openings, getting all the pieces out, getting the king safe. And then it felt like maybe you were you were looking for a plan. And one of the best ways to look for a plan is try to improve the the less active pieces, the the worst pieces. So like maybe here looking for an opportunity to improve the queen and bishop, staying on this side of the board where you had played the last move. Sometimes the easiest way to have a good plan is to stack moves on the same side of the board. Like rather than sort of what happened where you where you played moves on different sides of the board back to back, it kind of leads to a disjointed plan. Whereas if you if you try to build up pieces on the same side of the board, your army's working together. And so rather than just the specific Bishop H4 tip, maybe that's a tip for future games, right? Look to move all your pieces on one side of the board a little more coordinated. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know that. I'm super apologetic yeah, if I taking on the coach film wasn't what we planned, but we just wanted to go over the games because you guys you guys uh, gave us a treat. And Charlie, obviously you played super well, so obviously the serious question has to come. Just how long is your hair now? <laughs> oh, I, I haven't measured it, but it's got to be pushing like a, one or two feet, right? Like it's probably right. a good percentage of my overall height at this point since I have the height of like a child. Like we've got to <laughs> be getting pretty close to that threshold. Well, as your rating grows, so does your hair. It ain't that the truth? Yeah, I get more powerful. Yeah. So, Charlie, just one quick question for you. Do you feel uh, similar to how you did in Pac Champs 1? Do you feel like that experience is making you less nervous, or is it uh, the sort of same kind of sensation? Oh, absolutely not. I think it's a lot more nerves this time because I won the, the losers bracket, the consolation participation trophy bracket, and now I'm like almost expected to win some games. And I think that sucks. That shit is tough, man. <laughs> Having to play with like an expectation to do well. Yeah, Luckily for definitely me, can relate. <laughs> I've been playing with low expectations on me for years. So you can come back my way whenever you're ready. Low expectations. Um, Nico, what about you? All right, this is cool. Yeah, I'll just your... start tanking games. <laughs> Nico, this oh, is your you first Pog Champs event. Cut out for me. How, how are you feeling? Yes. Oh, I was really, really excited and super nervous to go against like literally chess Jesus himself. Mm. Um, <laughs> but I was just really happy that I did more than six moves. Yeah, and, no, uh, I think that's great. That right? was one of the finest performances I've seen in Pog Champs. Typically, I'm slapping cheeks around six moves. You went all the way to like 12 <laughs> oh. in some cases. <laughs> Six moves, we're winning for me today. Amen. <laughs> exactly. Well, it was well, we'll be looking for you to improve, uh, Mika. That was very well played, both of you. You guys were nice. Thanks for showing the tips. I think uh, I'll use that for my next tournament. Yeah. Well, obviously you got more mm, matches coming next? up, and what are your thoughts over the next couple of weeks? You, you're gonna have you're gonna have two more matches in the group, and then either the championship or consolation bracket. Are you are you looking to get some some coaching and, and crush some peeps from here, or are you just you just kind of here for the experience? My group D is very 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 fun. Um, Ludwig is gonna be fun to play against. I played against his bot and he completely crushed me. Oh, wow. Um, and then I'm really looking forward to Mr. Beast because I've heard from my chat that Mr. Beast is like my level, so mm. that's going to be fun. Um, I'm gonna get some more coaching and um, and just have more fun. I think. Well, Charlie, have you beaten? That's the wrong mentality, Miko. <laughs> There's no fun here. No, no, no. no. Forbidden. Brutalize people, Miko. Okay, I will. I will scouts. work. I will work day and night to brutalize Ludwig next week. Or that, that should okay. be easy. His bot is so much better than him anyway. Like when you play real Ludwig, it's gonna be night and day. Damn, really? Oh yeah, he cannot play even like his bot. Wait, seriously? No, yeah. okay. I honestly think he just uses the chat when he plays games and just takes their moves. <laughs> I've never seen him have an original thought. Oh. Wow. Huh. Them fighting okay. words. Thanks, Moise, for giving me courage. I'll tell my chat to mm -hmm. put all in on me next time. Oh, absolutely. That's a safe bet. Yep. <laughs> well wow. uh, you guys have been great uh charlie again congrats and starting your your pog champs return 
got pressure on yourself this time, but you're also you you've gotten so much better, man, over the last few months. Seriously, it's been awesome to watch. You're 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 crushing it. And Miko, these were good games, good start to the event, and best of luck in the, in the next round. Thank you so much, Thank guys. You. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Me. Great games. All right, bye. All right. Bye. Well, that was that was fun, wow. and uh, you know, I definitely agree with Charlie about Ludwig's chess experience and and strength. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think I've lost a lot of weak spot before and I actually haven't, but I'm pretty sure I will. <laughs> but Charlie and Ludwig will play. I would, I would pay to just see Charlie bot play against Ludwig bot on chess.com with the two of them comment, commenting over it. Just, uh, mm -hmm. just commentating over their bot battling against each other could be great. Uh, remind chat if you upload the first one to upload a video of you beating Ludwig bot today, going to get a diamond membership from me on Twitter. While you're while you're waiting for the next match, go ahead and throw me throw me okay. a video of you beating Ludwig Bot on Twitter. So, anyway, this is this is already a lot of fun. Yeah. We've got Lud coming up versus Mr. Beast. If you missed it, uh, more is on the line in this matchup between Ludwig and Mr. Beast than than even the the Pog Champs money. So don't go anywhere. We'll remind you of what what banter's been going on on social media when we come right back. Boyfriend applications for VTuber Miko, and it's gonna turn into a game show. It's gonna be, it's gonna first start with me and reviewing your boyfriend applications for VTuber. Then we're gonna move on to a uh, job a hiring. It's gonna be like The Office, where I will interview these boyfriends like they do in the office. And then it's gonna turn into a full on game show. Full on competitive game show. So guys, wait, I'm on Chess TV? Wait, what? What do you mean? What do you mean? I'm still on Chess TV? I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be on Chess TV. I should be, uh, stop trolling me. Anyways, I love you guys. Let's go. Rest up. I'm going to go rest up. And the 27th is my birthday, everybody. We're having an incredible stream. We're not trolling. Oh, freaking hell. God, I mean, guys, what? Oh, uh, hello, Chess TV. Um, I did not know I was on Chess TV. I'm sorry for um, if I said anything that was not Chess. I love you all. Thank you so much for having me on Chess TV. Um, yeah, I love I love everybody there. You're I understand. I'm on Chess TV. I understand. Okay, you you've told me that already. I, I get it now. I'm good. I'm good. Anyway, I love you guys. Um, 27th is my birthday. We are we are ha we are gonna we're having a technician stream, but we're having a technician stream like no other has seen on stream before. We're gonna have the most, we're gonna do something that no Twitch stream has ever done before on Twitch. So, come for my birthday stream that is on the 27th. I'm going to set up a PO box. And one of the things that we're gonna do is open up presents that you guys have sent me on the PO box. And um, yeah. Guys, if you have not already, uh, join my Patreon. So, and if you have joined my Patreon, make sure you write your username on my Patreon on the post. You will see it because we will start shouting out Patreon names. Um, what else? Do I have anything else? Um, Dr. K is tomorrow. Tomorrow is technician stream and we are going to be on Dr. K tomorrow. I will be, there will be tears. Um, and we're going to be talking about, I think I'm going to change the topic to my workaholic uh, uh, situation and how I feel guilty about spending time uh, with my friends or, or things like that. Um, there's going to be tears. Um... And then after that, we're going to go on Cash App Trivia. Then after that, uh, I have to plan out. 
Oh, okay. This Saturday and Sunday is going to be interesting. I have to lock down times and dates. But um, this, this weekend might get really interesting. Okay, everybody. I love you guys. Um, I will uh, talk to you guys later. And um, I'll, I'll see you guys on my Discord. I love you all. Thank you so much for joining this chess stream today with me. Let's go Ludwig. I'll promise I'll try to spend some time practicing more chess. I love you guys. Bye. Join my YouTube. Subscribe to your YouTube channel. And before our next match takes off, we are now joined by Mr. Beast himself, one of the biggest YouTubers in the world. And Jimmy, I got to ask before the match starts, what charity will you donate Ludwig's $10,000 to after you beat him today? Ooh, I have to donate it to charity? Uh, no, kidding. you don't um, actually. Keep it all for yourself. Jude. I know, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, I feel bad just stealing 10 grand from him. Wait, am I... Moving out of cam, it's really I, zoomed in. You're a little crop. We're, we're, we're gonna fix it right uh, now. You're there good. we go. Okay, good. Yeah, uh, St. Jude's. Why not? Cancer sucks. Cool. That's, well, that's awesome. I, uh, I, I, we were joking off camera that you'll maybe have, uh, you have a lot of people rooting for you today, and obviously we, we love Ludwig, so we like to tease him. He's streaming right now. But what, how, how are you feeling about yeah. today? Right, you're making your Pod Champs debut. You've, you've had some chess sessions, some coaching under your belt, and. What are your what are thoughts what thoughts are going through your head right now? Um well I I have a game plan. Um I I mean ask me afterwards. Uh, okay. I'll go more in depth, but I, I do have a game plan. We'll we'll see if it falls apart. Um yeah, we'll we'll just put it there. Okay. Well he, yeah, he does the same <laughs> opening basically every game. If you just yeah, he's, he's a one trick profile. pony, always so. has been. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, completely. Whether I'm smart enough or not to take advantage of that, we'll find out today. Well, he spreads all these rumors about his own strength. How do you feel about that? His bot, um, he's created this whole cult of personality. Are you buying any of that? Uh, yeah, no, he's pretty good. I was, I've been watching uh, a few <laughs> of his streams. Uh, he, he knows what he's doing. I think it'll be pretty competitive. Um, I'm just going to do my best not to blunder anything and like just completely screw up that way. Uh, but I, I think it will be a pretty good game. Yeah. Speak of the no. devil. I think we have some... Is that the man? Did you join? Well, um, jokes Can aside, this is awesome. Mind? Of course, we wish you the best of luck. And before we let you go, let me just say again that um, as when we, when we invited you to the event and you were on board, what was, uh, what was the biggest factor? Was it the charitable element you wanted to get involved? We know your stream does awesome things in that way. Or were you just like everyone else fell in love with the Queen's Gambit and Beth Harmon and wanted to give, wanted to give chess your best chance? I, I played chess a lot when I was younger, but uh, okay. I, I stopped playing. And then like everyone else, I'm ashamed to admit, I watched Queen's Gambit. I got back into it. And uh, honestly, it just seemed like something fun. You know what I mean? To take my, my mind off of working and, so I've, I've enjoyed practicing a little bit and I'm excited.
Well, regardless of how the match goes, we hope that the banter well, best of luck to continues you. on social media, showing everybody the tweet right now. You guys have had some fun going <laughs> back and forth. So, our, you know, I know I know it's all in fun and jest. <clears throat> uh, oh, my gosh. Oh, there's the man. Oh, my gosh. Hello. I, oh. I thought we were about to end. Uh-oh. Uh, okay, first of all, um, can I call you? Can I call you Mister instead of Mister Beast? Uh, sure, <laughs> Mister. whatever you want. Whatever you want, Lud. These Chess.com clowns. Okay, and let's just call them what they are: fiending content. Hit me in the DMs. They go, "Hey, do you want to hop on to talk shit on Mister Beast?" And you know, <laughs> bigger man. I said no. No, this guy, look, he's a little bit nervous. Like, come on, mm -hmm. he's a busy man. I don't want to do this to him. Come to find out you're on here talking shit, calling me one trick pony. All right. At one point, what, what is this? What is this, mister? I thought we had a thing going on. I thought this was like a, this is a friendly bout. What? I didn't call you one trick pony. They called you one I trick did. pony. I did. And you didn't call Danny dumb and stupid for it, which <laughs> he is. I mean, to be fair, yeah, we'll see. Okay. What? So, so like, out of curiosity, like, what's your real rating? Because, like, your account you don't play a lot of games on. Is it like, <laughs> like 500? Uh, somewhere probably between 500 and 600. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, is it actually? Okay. I don't You're want, baited. I don't wanna, You're I, baited. I don't want to give away too much. I we'll, thought we'll you were busy. We this was supposed to be my freebie match. I thought you had, like, <laughs> fucking work to do or something. <laughs> 17 YouTube channels and, like, a food facility. Have you been playing chess all of a sudden? <laughs> We'll see. I, I don't want to give away too much. The more oh I tell God. you, it, the more competitive advantage you have. Jimmy, this was the one match I wasn't supposed to stress about. I came in here. It's a <laughs> fucking meme. I put up $10,000. <laughs> I was trying to bait you to put another 10K up so I could get easy clap 10K. You didn't even fall for it. I know. I noticed. Ah, uh, okay. But you know what? Here, I, I, I will put up 10K, though. We're both throwing on 10K. Winner, what, whoever wins, not just one game, but whoever wins overall gets 10 grand. I'll match it. Wow. Sure, yeah, that's that's <laughs> fine. It's totally chill. I, I guess well, I if he says it, I didn't say it. That was just me that said that. So. I, I like to make things more fun. Yeah, yeah. No, that would that I that's that's crazy. That would help that's like 20 minutes of Shroud's time. That's pretty good. I'll take that. <laughs> uh so I, well look, I'm ready. I played your bot, and let me tell you, I I stunted on your bot. But like you shit on it? I shit on your bot. I, I Good. checkmated My bot's your bot. Trash. They purposely made him suck. Wait, yeah. why? To bait me? <laughs> what is this misdirection you're doing? <laughs> okay, that's fine. I feel good about this. You know well, what? Okay. I, I, we'll see what happens. Hey, here, I, I bet I bet you move uh, your pawn to, uh, in front of your king first. Dude, he's gonna psych me out and this is maybe his game plan he's gonna make me play some dumb shit now i'm gonna play a terrible opening line because he's in my head this is like that one time donya you'll remember when tall laughed mm -hmm. at world champion bobby fisher when he wrote down a move he was gonna do and then bobby fisher decided to not play that move and tall <laughs> ended up winning the game yep but i still have bobby fisher behind me but i do remember that's historical knowledge i see yeah, it's whatever. Oh, Jimmy, did those not, tall games. Did you not know about that, Jimmy? It was just a little bit of chess history. I've <laughs> uh -huh. been brushing up on. Might not be um, the most accessible. <laughs> I read actually. I read Bobby Fischer's biography. I, I find him very interesting. I listened to the audio book and I got bored halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> Same, but I kept powering through because I was already halfway. Did you read it? Read it or audio book it? Audio. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. When I say read, I mean, listen, no, one no, reads I do too. I do too. I just, I would have felt really dumb if you were also a book reader. What, what <laughs> I, I didn't think you had time to do stuff. I thought all you do is YouTube. Well, you got to turn your brain off occasionally. It's like 90% of my life is YouTube and the other 10% I'm like struggling to find Bro, something you else. you got three YouTube channels. Like, a, what do you call that? A place all right, you, calm you, down. We don't have, you have to a just... girlfriend. You got, wait, how do you, okay. I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm over it. All right. We'll just I'm see what happens on the playing field. Play That's chess. always a good cue to cut. Gotta wait. Always I'm a good, good right cue now. to, uh, to cut Ludwig off right there. Cause I think that while well, we wish both of you guys <laughs> best of luck, I know I speak for everyone when I say that Everyone will be rooting for you, Jimmy. Um, so Danny on Robo for anyone else? It's just me. Let's yeah, go for it. Go it. for it, guys. Yeah, Danny, you, uh, want, you want a robo mode, Danny. Robo mode what? You gotta fix your mic, brother. Yeah. Oh. Yep, you won't you won't robot <laughs> as well. Sorry, Ludwig just right. has that effect on people. 
Wait, so are, we, are we playing now or do we got to Yeah, let's the, go. Let's the, go. The world waiting. I'm going to go. Good I'm going to dip out. I'm going to dip good out. Luck, I'll see you in a we'll, bit, uh, Jimmy. Okay. Good we'll luck. See good luck. We'll see you good on the other kid. side. And as the players get ready, I want to give one more shout out, of course, to Grip6. Not only are they sponsoring Pod Champs, and you saw the belt earlier, we also have this incredibly awesome custom made chess set. Uh, their belt is the only belt with no holes, no flap, no bulk. Made right here in the US of A. Go to go.chess.com go slash grip six to enter into the Pog Champs Ultimate Giveaway and use the code POGCHAMPS20 for 20% off all of Grip Six products. They're they're awesome. I'm literally wearing their socks right now. I've really fallen in love with their socks. That's nothing against the belt or the wallet, but I, I I'm a sucker for some comfy feet. And so I'm wearing them. Um, and uh, on that note, another thing, another reason to enter is you may win that awesome custom chess set. I've seen it. It's here in the office. We'll be setting it up at some point. So, Danya, don't go anywhere. That interview was awesome. I'm even more pumped for Ludwig versus Mr. Beast. We'll be right back. Yeah, something's really off. Yeah, we can hear you. What? It, and I'm, it's not on my end, right? Like you guys no, hear the same thing. Is it on the, the show too? Good, but Zoom. It's not on the show. No, it's not on the show. It's just Zoom. Yeah, Zoom does that every once in a while. Remember, we had that before. Danya, is it still acting up? Yeah, it's like. Shops really, Aaron, really need to mute to OBS. Yo. Mr. B six thousand. All right, time to get hype. I'm a little nervous now. I didn't. I didn't think he. I knew his account, and I looked at it, and he only played like 20 games. But now I know he has a secret account that's way higher rated. And he also studied my openings. And so my 10,000 easy clap W might become another financial disaster. But the prediction is live gamblers on my channel. So lay down the points if you believe. Because I'm going to try to roll this motherfucker and smoke him. Take it down. Take the W. For all the bitches on YouTube who don't have 50 million subs. And don't give to charity often. Which I guess is most of us. I don't know. He's like such a good guy. So it's hard to really be mad at him. But yeah, eat shit, pussy. Woo. Uh, okay. I'm good to go. I'm good to go. I'm prepped. Uh, I had the sickest mate. I feel so good because I had such a sick mate on his bot. But it was his bot. Uh, I just have to make sure I put chat in a good place that I can cheat from. Uh, that way, if I'm in a tough spot, I can just look over. We're on chess.com right now? Closing out of it right now. Just a joke. Just a meme. Just a meme is all. Just a fun little joke. Come on, guys. You know me. Just a fun little meme amongst friends. Oh, actually, this is a banger. Hey, here's. I have uh, one piece of advice for Mr. Beast in chess. My first pitch. Why listen to me? It's for you, Mr. Beast. I am a decently attractive dude. I play video game, make millions. And we are back here after what was pretty awesome pregame interview there. I mean, obviously Ludwig almost took over the show as he always does, but I felt, uh, I, I feel even more pumped for this Ludwig beast battle than I was before. I am super pumped as well. After all that talk, we got to have some epic games to follow it up, Danny. Yeah, here they come. I'm uh, I'm following Lud Skywalker, his chess.com username. I mean, when is he going to, is he 12? 
I mean, is he still naming himself after Star Wars characters? So anyway, we got Lud coming up right now. Well, you, you know, he studies tall games. He, I think he's stuck in the past. He's stuck in the 70s. I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing. <laughs> um, he, uh, yeah, trying to throw some shade on Beast. Obviously, we know they're kidding and they're, and they're good friends and it's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, apparently, now this game is going to work out even better than it could have been for Ludwig if he beats Beast. He's got 10K coming back to him because uh, Jimmy ponied up there. That's, I mean, as if the trash talk wasn't enough, we needed higher stakes. Uh, I think this is awesome. I think the nerves, whoever's nerves are going to give out first. That's, that's what's going to determine this game. Yeah, and if for those of you who maybe just tuned in, and I don't think so, a lot of you have been here. We got more than 70,000 on Twitch and a lot of other people everywhere else. But um, uh, Ludwig tweeted this morning that he would give 10K to Jimmy if he lost, and Jimmy just matched the bet. So we got 10K on the line going into their pockets. We know that Ludwig needs the money going broke over there. Uh, Jimmy, not so much, but uh, but yeah. So, all right. Games are beginning right now. Here we go. And Ludwig off. and Mr. Beast, Pog Champs 3, presented by Grip6, continues. And 1E4, and Mr. Beast is stumped. <laughs> He's taking his time. <laughs> He's waving. Wow, that's a very rare move by Ludwig. <laughs> Okay. The Scandinavian. All oh, right. Man, this just, I'm going to have to deal with John Bartholomew all over again. The Team Scandy. Hi, guys. Team Scandy. Mr. Beast. Here we go. <laughs> hey, guys. This is John. All right. We can just play Scandy here. <laughs> He's gotten his filthy hands on Mr. Beast opening repertoire. He's playing fast, too. Okay. So, who is so the better Bartholomew doing. impersonation, me or you? Probably me. Well, you need to do more of it. You can't just say two words and then uh, have me award you the Bartholomew Medal. So, did you not John, see my? What do my, you think about the Scandi? Did you not see my April Fool's video? With, hi guys, this is John. I stopped by Starbucks on the way. All right, so really proud of this video, and I wanted to bring it to you guys because it's about the Hundred Egg Game series. And uh, okay, Team Scandi. That was that was decent, Danny. You know, I'll give you a B minus, which is in my in my book is a pretty good grade. All right, but um, you know, I've heard of better impersonations. To be completely honest, uh, you're you are the impersonation king, so I'll let I'll let it be. Um, all right, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about the Scandi because if you again, if you're just tuning in, uh, Jimmy said he's been doing some prep. I actually know that he was doing some coaching earlier today before this. I don't know if I'm allowed to say which coach. Maybe I am, but he was doing some some mm -hmm. training. And he said he didn't want to go into what he prepared. He wanted to save it. So here he's busting out the Scandi. And uh, I don't know. I think Lud might be nervous. Let's, let's listen into Lud and see what he's thinking about. So that would stop that as well. Uh, instead, he attacks this, uh, which is defended at the moment, but certainly could be a tricky situation in the future. Uh, this was all for a castle. So castle I shall. I also have this threat though. So I'm actually just going to be a little prophylactic here. Maybe even a bit cowardly. But I'm going to play this move. Actually it doesn't really defend it though. I actually regret this a bit. Because if he plays it. If he, might see, if he sees it. If he plays this and I take he wins. So I can't even. It's, it's actually a fake move. Fake but uh, it's fine. He's laying a lot of pressure here. Typical Scandi fashion, he does decide to castle queenside. Uh, I am going to push up this pawn now. Uh, understanding that this bishop needs to leave. And this blocks any threat here. Making this pretty much useless. And then I'm going to probably go for a d2 with my bishop looking at the queen. Perhaps with a move like, I don't know, knight over here. Doesn't really matter, he's I think. Doing, he's doing well describing his thought process. Uh, let's go. But, yeah, so he's, he's going to push again, doing. maybe. That's the idea. Yeah, he's walking us through all the he logic. again. And it's pretty good logic. E5, though. Might be, yeah, that's I mean, not he bad. He did have some prep. Look at this Scandi. Because if he pushes again here Give and I this. take, I'm threatened. Lawless. Uh, but it is attacked twice, so I'm fine as well. So I'm going to go here. Sticking to the plan. 
If he pushes, I can just take with my pawn. It frees it up to capture because my queen is no longer being attacked by this rook. Wow. Castling is an idea I definitely want to achieve at some point in my lifetime. Hmm. I love. Uh, if he pushes, thinking. I'm kind of happy yeah, about I... it to be honest. Yeah. I... I don't know, but I think Jimmy wow. was feeling good. We were, we we had him off camera before, but he was smiling when he played e5 and kind of rubbing his hands. So we'll try to listen into him when he he starts talking. But uh, he he feels or he he's emulating emulating confidence good. here. I think and, I'm good. I'm not worried. No cares in the world. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> oh. Yeah. He's just so happy. They're both I love it. Full of confidence. Yeah, I know. What's there isn't that. Do? Maybe he's nervous, but what's he gonna do? Oh boy. <laughs> have I have I blundered yet? Have I have I lost the game? Nope. You haven't. Take some time. Not he's yet. really thinking here. And look, he's up on the clock. I mean, might if we keep talking about it. Now that's a dangerous move, though. Got to move your queen. Blood did say that he thought that... Uh, I think a lot of people have been unsure about Jimmy's strength, right? Because he hasn't played as much. We haven't known where he was at. And so maybe that's why Blood felt confident enough to throw the 10K on the line. But uh, if Jimmy plays some good moves out of this opening, he's definitely gotten an advantage as black, which is saying something. It, absolutely and uh his pieces are active now he's got to move his queen that's the first step and let's see how he manages to play now that he's probably out of his preparation he's got like you said he's got to make a couple logical moves here but ludwig is he's, he's not in a terrible shape but he's developed pretty passively here yeah but you're right he he he's not in terrible shape especially if if jimmy makes a false step with the queen here god forbid he goes full botez gambit never go full botez ever that's what they tell you uh, right. Put the queen on a safe square like this, and you should be okay. Mm -hmm. Completely. And white can take black's knight, but then that pawn from g7 can just recapture. And then black can use that file uh, and put a rook there and attack white's king, because Ludwig is probably going to castle short at some point. And it's going to be a race of who gets to the opposing king first. Jimmy is... Uh gone into his first real think of the game so whether he was literally prepped before 94 yeah. which would be incredible or he just felt like confident enough about the opening he's obviously gonna gonna need to speed up from here because he's going on two full minutes having thought here yeah and you know what concerns me danny is the amount of time that he's thinking because uh if you identify the threat you maybe spend a minute deciding where you put the queen but okay and he's centralized it. that's a great move seriously Fantastic. Um, I, I was highlighting queen b6, wow. um, but queen d5 might have been even better, honestly. This is, this is a great move, especially if, like Danya said, everybody, if the, if the play switches somehow to the king side, the queen will be so ideal here. I mean, you could even play e4 right away, but just to highlight what might happen with the queen and rook working together. So that would be some coordination here if, if beast can can uh, convert the middle game advantage to a kingside attack. That leads me astray. Absolutely. And, and in the early going, the time consumption is what concerns me from both sides. All right. right? They're already close to... I don't to think we waste any time here. Particularly Mr. Beast. Yep. You think got the... Jimmy talking here. Obvious. Mm -hmm. Now if he castles kingside, that's a dub for us. I got my book threatening. Pretty sure. I can sound like an idiot. Full disclosure, I don't know what I'm talking about. But I think he does. I assume. I think he does. Mr. Beast is uh, playing like a beast so far. Let's listen to Ludwig, see how nervous he is. He really is. Cheese. Yeah. That music is so calming, though. If he pushes, though, I think that's my main concern. If he pushes and I capture, and then the queen captures, that gets a little bit monkus. But I think if he pushes, I can just push as well, maybe? Hmm. Or I can just stand my ground. 
It's not really a threat, even though there's three attackers, because the queen is in front of the rook. So he would lose a queen in this trade. I don't know if opting to castle is too bitch made. I could also do this move. If I go Not a here, great move. weakens the pawn. Defended. He can't go here. He can't go here. Can't take. Could go here. That would kind of help him, though. No. No. Pretty good game, right? Hmm. Yeah, but well, look the at the clock. The problem with this move yep. is that I'm no longer defending this piece. So if I go here, he could attack, and it's only defended once, but I would just take. I'm going to... I don't know if I'll regret this. I really don't, but I'm going to go with the castle because I'm wasting a lot of time. I'm going to try to play a little bit quicker. Because you only get five seconds per move. I think the last block champs was 15 10, maybe 10 10. Maybe it's 10 5. No, it was 10 5. Chess.com, can I stop getting front requests from me, Ermano? <laughs> so, what should be on top of G8? Will he see the way to get to White's King? Well, okay, regardless of what happens here, East has already impressed us, right, Danya? I mean, I mean, this is this is a high level game here, and I'm impressed not only with Mr. Beast's preparation, but how he's followed that through. He centralized his queen fundamentals. Now, this is the pivotal moment, Danny. I really think that the next couple of moves are going to decide the game. Will Mr. Beast understand the area of the board that he has to play on? And that is the king side. He's got to start attacking White's king. He's got to do it quickly. Both players now down to five minutes. Yeah, and, and I think we've been focused on Beast. Uh, you know, maybe we know him a little bit less than Ludd and all that stuff, but Ludwig also gets a ton of credit. I mean, he came out here, obviously against a well-prepared opponent, kind of surprised him, and his position is is totally playable, right? And I, you see, he was even highlighting, he, he saw the drawback of advancing the pawn to C4. He pointed out that the D3 pawn would be weak, which was, like, also, mm -hmm. also fantastic. So, yeah, I mean... Um, but now, okay, now now Beast is getting down on the clock. Yeah, he understands. Yeah, and that's now he's below five minutes. And Ludwig understands the danger, which is a very important thing. If you're playing over confidently, uh, you're much more likely to make a blunder. But I'm really, really not liking this this time consumption. And he's done Rook G8, but look at him go. That is really impressive, Danny. Dude, seriously, right? He's playing all the natural moves. So shout out to whatever kind of secret training uh, Jimmy's been getting on on the side because he's clearly clearly an underdog here, uh, surprising people. He's he is under five minutes, so if this game continues with both them, you know, playing the way they are, we, it may just come down to time pressure anyway, which is part of life, right? We we don't play games that that have hours and hours on the clock anymore, at least not in these online events. So uh, we'll see. But Rook mm -hmm. G eight, what a move! That's a great move. It pins the pawn. We saw Charlie do something similar in, uh, obviously, in a different position, but the idea was the same. Uh, in the future, you could slide your bishop over to h3 and attack that pawn because it's pinned. So Ludwig tries to preempt that, but he does weaken his king side a little bit. Beast could still get his bishop uh, down to h3. That would be a great move. Yeah, but g3 was really good by Lud, right? I mean, it's anticipating just to show that if, if you waited with some random move and bishop h3 came in, everybody, it's even worse because... Now, when you push g3, the pawn is pinned, right? You can't take. You lose the rook. So, so Lud also, this is this is some high quality chess here. This is awesome. I mean, one of the things I can say, we're only three days in to Pog Champs 3, presented by Grip 6, but uh, I think the chess has been overall maybe some of the best we've ever had. For sure. And the ratings, Danny, and I, I know you'll second me on this, they don't tell the whole story. No. Um, you might look at the number and say, ah, he's a beginner, but Beast is playing. Some really high quality chess, but this will go down to a time scramble. We're 12 moves in and he's below four minutes. Let's not forget, they're not experienced at Blitz and Bullet. So um, if either of them gets down to a minute, that just might decide the game, unfortunately. Yep. Oh man, so nervous. So, I mean, someone's going to get 10 grand in their pocket and it's not me, but one of these guys no. is going to lose 10 grand today. <laughs> Whoa! 
E4. E4, that's another fantastic move, opening up the center. He's got the- And Ludwig saw that possibility, rook. but it's still a dangerous move. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. And C4 counterattacking the queen. It's about to get spicy, everybody. Buckle up. Yep. The queen is attacked. He's got to move it. Where does he move it? Probably just back to B7. That would be a good move. Critical here. So there's only real tiles here. Mm -hmm. To which maybe I could go here. It's not defended though. Oh, it is. That works. If he goes here, I could go here. He could interpose. But then I can take. Protected. <clears throat> Okay. So interpose, I just take. Oh no, I can't take because the rook. Fuck, I didn't even see that. Shit. Shit. Well, that's fine. We'll wait for his move before we worry about ours. The flag. I still, yep. he interposes, might take here. Because I still win a rook. That's still a win. I lose a bishop and a knight for a knight and a rook. So I, that's not actually that big of a deal. I'm not winning a queen, boo-hoo. Jimmy's playing a precarious well position, done, though, huh? Like you said, luck. Honestly, I don't even know if it's that bad to go takes, mm -hmm. takes, Two takes. Now. Gotta move the queen. Oh. That might even be good for him, to be totally honest. Queen sacrifice. Oh, did I blunder? What? No. No. He didn't we talked about that. Um. Huh. Okay, I'll do this. He panicked, Danny. That way I'm attacking. If he goes here, I take this. Exposing. Oh, man, that's unfortunate. But it's how some of these man. games have gone when you see... Players play really well, and you think their strength is better than it is, and you might you might see that there's prep helping them, and they're getting positions they kind of they feel good about, but then having the experience to play those and choose the right plan in the critical moment is another thing, right? And here, Jimmy, after playing like a like an absolute boss, like a beast, if you will, he hmm. uh, he Fine. goes full Botez. Never do it. Yeah, and you can see in his face and it's just body language. Uh, he was all smiles. He's feeling confident, vibing, and now you can just see the sort of... He's not outwardly showing anything, but you can just tell uh, the disappointment. And uh, we can all relate to that. I mean, we can, no matter what level we are, we can all relate to this feeling of realizing that you had a good position, but you couldn't quite make anything of it. Yeah. Well, it, it should give him confidence, right? Regardless of what happens in the match, um... That was an awesome start to the game. And he was playing quickly, a fantastic middle game. And I think, uh, you know, it, it, Ludwig did the right thing when he started kind of getting aggressive. He played C4, even if it wasn't objectively the best. He started attacking uh, Mr. Beast, and uh, and that was the pressure he needed. So I, I, I don't think that Lud is going to blow this at this point. He's, he's improved so much as well, a lot like Charlie from PogChamps 1, right? I just don't think that Ludwig doesn't win this game now. And I'm particularly impressed, Danny, to your point about his improvement of, with his logic. I mean, he was spelling it out for us. Yep. Uh, he was thinking some very high-level thoughts. He was calculating variations. Not all of his moves were great, uh, but he was putting a tremendous amount of thought into them. So he's, uh, he's definitely on the grind, and, and it's really impressive to see, honestly. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I think one of the most impressive things was that, was that uh, Ludwig – Played quickly enough, even though he was getting outplayed, so to speak, right? Jimmy had a better opening. Ludwig was on his, on his heels a little bit. But he played quickly enough that, um, that he was always in the game, right? And I think that's a huge sign in experience, right? I think players, as they, as they play more, understand you can't solve every problem on every move. So you have to at least give yourself a chance on the clock. And, and then now, now not only is he winning, but he's way up on time. Yes, and Ludwig just did something somewhat unnecessary. He took the bishop with his rook, yeah. uh, giving up an exchange. Now, it's understandable. He's trying to simplify, right? He's trying to get pieces off the board, and it's kind of working. Uh, that wasn't necessary, but it doesn't ruin anything. 
Right. Well, Beast grabs the pawn here. Ooh. That's such a good move. That's a beautiful move. Let's listen in on Lovig and see if he actually saw the pin that he's going to mate him if he takes the rook. King can't move. Oh, wow. He did. So I actually pinned his wow. bishop to a mate. Oh, wow. my gosh. So if he takes, I mate. Five so he has to take here, wild. and I win it. it. And then it. I'll just do a little doubled up file, and I'll still go for a big... It's a killer wallop. Dude, I'm super impressed by Lovick. I obviously I do as much as I can to to bag on him on a regular basis. Got him with but the that old was awesome. pin, eh? <laughs> no, you gotta take your hat. Uh, Bishop let's send the disc. Do sack. this check. Now he has to take. Wow. I take with check. Um I hmm. I will form a this is flat out. Not impressive. a battery. I forget the name yep. for this. Uh, we're very battery? safe here. Using correct gesture? We can go either oh, here. He's not actually attacking us, so this is oh my pretty God. irrelevant. This is nasty. We just check when the, the rook. rook. Look at the confidence now. Wow. And now, now there's very little threat for us to lose this game. Um, but we will try to since he wants to keep going. Not that I think he should stop, but uh, we'll go wow, here, take, and then we hope as he goes pawns. down. If he goes down one, then I just take it. He doesn't do that, which is totally fine. Um, I will, however, go... I don't have a pin at the moment. I will check this way. Danny, this is textbook technique. Yeah. I'm sort of speechless. It's GG, but maybe he finds something. Varetsky's saying um, Emmanuel, which you hmm. bought. Hang on. We can fork the rook. Free move to take. Look at and him, he's free wow. moving. Who is this imposter? And what oh have they done God. with Ludwig? What? All right, game one win. This is. Oh my gosh. This is just nastiness. Who is this imposter and what I have mean, they done with Ludwig? This is Ludwig Kasparov, Ludwig Tall. He was talking about those world champions. They'd be proud of him right now. Unbelievable. Uh, all right. Wow. Well, obviously, we're going to take a very quick break before game two begins. Super impressive uh, coming out of the gate by Mr. Beast, but Ludwig holds on and takes game one. Can uh, Jimmy turn it around with the white pieces? Find out. It's game two when we return. And I don't think there's a way out of this. Well, I guess I can just go here, right? Yeah, it's fine. But I don't know. That seems pretty good for him. I guess he only has... Yeah, bishop takes. Yeah, interesting position. He, dude, he fucking... He was cracked. <laughs> nice. No blunders, but quite a few mistakes. I don't feel bad about that, though. Uh, you're going to make mistakes when you have no fucking clue what the hell to do. I've never seen this opening played exactly. I've seen the Scandi, but I, I, I don't often see the Scandi played with uh, A5. The pawn up, I guess, was the idea, but I hated the idea of pitting. I hated that, but I guess there's nothing to attack. So this guy's whatever, 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 whatever. He looked like an engine first 15 moves. I think he just prepared a line and props to him. Cause I think it was a hell of a line. That was a really good line. I thought. Anyway, uh, how's it going? Let's double check. Let's double check, double check, double check. There's only one real reason that you try to beat Mr. Beast, and it's for those sweet, sweet subscribers. So let's get a live subscriber count. Real time, Ludwig versus Mr. Beast. What do we have here? Surely, surely I am catching up. I have to be. Let's take a look. 
any moment now. You're about to start seeing this number on the left just rocket ship away. Ludwig versus Mr. Beast. You know, it's it's like PewDiePie versus T-Series, PewDiePie versus Coco Melon. PewDiePie picks a lot of fights. This is this is my moment. I think the website's a little slow. It's probably a bit slow. Does anyone do you have to like refresh or something? Do I have to do, I have to do a diss track? It's not probably broken website. Yeah, you're you're probably right. Don't unsub from me after I beat Mr. Beast. What do you mean? It's because you need a diss track? Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, shit. Yeah, I got you. Um, rap beat copyright free. Oh, no. I got a better. I got a better rap beat. Hmm. Hmm. Eat shit, pussy. You are bad. I am really good. That was all I had. I didn't really think too far into it. I was, I was kind of a one-bar song. <laughs> Sometimes it's good enough to have one bar. Sometimes you let the beat do the talking, you know what I mean? This shit going skyrocket. Tables are now open for gamblers. By the way, you got a minute left for any gamblers. Gamble away. Oh, I'm live on chess.com again. These motherfuckers got no content on oh, God. Hey, motherfuckers at chess.com. What's up? It's Ludwig. You ever notice how they always go to break and run ads and then they use me for entertainment? Well, you can help out. How? So easy. Uh, <clears throat> Let's talk about making your own hours. Fuck that nine to five shit. Let your money make money. How do we let our money make money? Introducing Mogul Moves. That's right. If you Twitch Prime to me right now, I'm going to be your friend. What does that get you? Some perks. Friends with me means you're friends with Saikuno, Corpse, Slime. What do those three have in common? Not much, actually. But you'll be friends with all of them. And all you gotta do is Twitch Prime. That's right. Click the subscribe button. See if it says subscribe free in purple. And if it does, you're golden, pony boy. Anyway, let's check on who's priming right now. Oh, shit. It's my friend. Um, Willis. Hey, Willis. Can't wait to grab lunch later. Catch you on the flippity flip. Anyway, back to the chess content. You guys have a good one. See you later. I got like 200 primes. That was the fucking smartest thing I've ever done in my life. I have so many Twitch primes now. And there we go. Again, enjoying the sweet, sweet sounds and video of Ludwig at the break. Uh, but now it's time to to move on and get get on to game two. Well, here's what I'm hypothesizing on, Danya. If if Jimmy's mm -hmm. prep was this good as Black, getting a better position in the Scandinavian, and then finding having the knowledge, it seems to 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 also know how to approach this middle game, the Rook G8 move. If his prep was this good as Black, what's he gonna do as White? This this is gonna be interesting. Yeah, and look, I mean, Ludwig's got to be scared. And one approach that Ludwig could take is to brave something that he doesn't normally play because it seems that, yeah, Beast got an amazing position. And if they get into something theoretical, you know, Beast could end up being winning. And that's the danger of falling to something like that when you're black. But 
but I called him a one trick pony and he delivered, right? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, but he did, he did also get the win. His Ludwig <laughs> jokes aside, he handled uh, beast prep and then, and then, and then cleaned up nicely. That was impressive from Ludwig shows his experience and where he's come, which is really why we do the event. It's awesome, obviously to, to, to grow the game and to bring the love of chess to a bunch of different streamers and entertainers of different categories. Uh, but watching someone improve, like Ludwig has, and how he like cleaned that up with pre-moving his way to victory. That was badass. That's all I'm going to say. So, good stuff. It was, but what's not badass is the fact that he's taking 30 seconds on move one, and Beast, Beast trotting out the D4. We don't see that often in Bob Gems. I think Ludwig's about to pull a, oh, bleep, the game has started. Oops. <laughs> Mm -hmm. No, maybe not. He played D5. Oh, and we saw, we saw we Jimmy give a fist pump there. He was expecting D5, so we'll see. McQueen's Gambit. That might be a first. Oh, Jim says string. Uh, he plays Queen's Gambit. I ignore like the that. Gambit. <laughs> Fuck that Gambit. No cap. <laughs> um, okay, sure. Wow. Mm. I already don't know what to do. This dude's so cracked. What the fuck is going on in this tournament? Can someone be bad at the game? I don't need to defend this. I could play maybe this move? Reasonable. It might allow him to do something like this, but I think that's fine. Okay, double defended. Still good. I could go here now. What? You went to the dark side? Yeah. The best in small doses. Jimmy played well. We're in it. We're in a Shigorin decline, which I don't think is exactly what Love would prep, but for those who speak speak fluid chess, knight to c6 is a Shigorin defense by Black. It's not not that well known or common even at the highest levels um but then bishop f5 this this could get spicy if beast is aware of ideas that involve queen b3 right johnny if he plays queen b3 at any point taking advantage of the light squares that'll really make me tip my hat to the coaching and the time he's putting because that would really show an understanding of the dangers developing the light square bishop in a queen's gambit mm -hmm. and i'm already tipping my hat i mean i'm not wearing a hat but if i had one and uh, this is a very interesting approach taken by Beast. He's, he's playing unconventional openings um, that he knows better than his opponent. Now, the problem, Danny, with the Queen's Gambit is that it's, it's not like the roof can come down for Ludwig. Even if he plays inaccurately, the worst that's going to happen to him is that he's going to end up being, you know, slightly worse. Or even if he's clearly worse, there is no attack on the horizon. So he's pretty solid here. And Beast developing his bishop. No, that's a really good point. It's... It's not as dangerous as it was for him on the white side of that Scandinavian we just had, even though uh, Beast wasn't able to convert on it. It was it was more potentially dangerous. This is going to be very solid. I, I totally agree with you. Um, reminder to everyone tuning in, these guys threw down a $10,000 bet started by Ludwig on Twitter this morning, and uh, Beast backed it live in an interview before the match started. So there's a lot on the line. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do with that 10K? If it's going to go to charity, you can donate to charity. Use the command charity command donate in, in the chat real quick to get information because that'll give you a link to the article where you can see all the charities chosen by our streaming celebrities. So if you are up for donating, obviously we have some big and lofty goals. We do appreciate it and use the commands charity or donate to get information. Wholesome AF. Am I allowed to say? Okay, I'm just going to say. You're allowed to say AF. Uh, but it, all right. Wholesome AF. <laughs> it means Atlantic fried, right? Atlantic fried uh, chicken. I thought it meant Atlantic um, fog. That's fog. like a type of coffee. And yeah, but Atlantic, now, now that I'm on the East Coast, right. yeah, okay, Atlantic yeah. is one I of my say as souls. AF a lot. As AF, which makes about as much sense as AF. So there you go. Um, all right, A6. Right. And A6 played by Lud, a solid move. Faux show. Sure. Yeah. They're so well. just oh. controlling some squares. He, he likes to stop ninety five. Mm-hmm. Talk, Danny. No, you talk. A6 stops. <laughs> Explain. Like, oh, enlighten us. You and I could talk or not talk for hours. That's the best part about our relationship. 
Indeed, indeed. And you know what? I should be rooting for Beast from the perspective of, I think that he actually lives in North Carolina. So uh, I think he's going to win the state championship pretty soon. I mean, the way that he's playing right now, Danny, he's, he's doing everything right. Is that a shade on North, uh, North Carolina chess or just Beast, Beast's ballerness? I mean, North Carolina chess is 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 in the gutter, basically. <laughs> I was gonna so, say, don't they have a grandmaster? You know, especially there? after that horrible. I heard about it. A terrible coach and uh, ruined the career of a successful YouTuber. You know, yeah, no, it's just a sad, sad story indeed. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, we'll we'll, we'll <laughs> learn more about that later. Ninety four played by Lud, so he moves a piece twice in the opening instead of developing. For the kids watching, that's a no no, right? Don't do that. Get your pieces developed. Get castled, but let's see what Ludwig is saying and how he justifies his current behavior on camera. Dear God. I think what he might do is also bring out the bishop. But that's fine for me, I think. Because if he brings out the bishop, I might just fucking pop this bitch open, you know what I mean? <laughs> Like this, this seems like a close position chat, music, but it is Music not. is growing at me. He brings out this bishop, I take, threading the queen, he has to take. I can take here, he takes with the queen. I pop this bad boy out. Okay, he does what I want though. Pawn or bishop. I want the pawn to take, because I want to one, make sure that this is dominated by me. And two, I want to keep this tension. And I also attack this, which can be good um, for me. Oh, this song's so fire, bro. So now we're going to bad boy out with a hope to castle. He'll probably do something similar with his bishop. Maybe he brings it out here. Wow. Is... If he brings out his bishop here, I think I, I have an speechless. interesting thing. If he goes here, I he's think I just this, these leave games this. These are so good. Regardless of who wins, this has been... I'm just I like know, it's super just... impressed with Beast and impressed with Lud. I'm, this is awesome. Seriously. Go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, no, we're, we're not just saying it. I mean, uh, the thing is, most of these players are familiar with E4 openings, and for them to play high-level chess after 1D4 in a position they're less familiar with is uh, is is amazing. That's it's awesome. And you know what else is awesome, Danny? is all those donations coming in. Uh, we really Seriously. appreciate it. This is great to see. Yeah, uh, we gave a, a, a an organic call to action because we were speculating what are these guys going to do with their 10K. Uh, remember, there's $10,000 on the line that they threw down this morning. But um, really, really do appreciate it. Obviously, we're going to continue to see that. We know that some of the players have even been public on social media that they're going to donate their winnings to charity. I know uh, my boy Bobby Logic said that on his Twitter account last week. Um, and so it's, it's awesome. It's a big, another, a big part of why we're doing this. So thank you again to the community. Now, now we'll focus on the chess and appreciate all the donations coming in. Um, all right, 95. So Beast kind of meets Ludwig's knight, knight E4 and says, I'll raise you one and also move my knight twice in the opening. And, and again, the main thing wow. I think is that either player probably should have just developed and gotten castled and more, more principled thing. But I also kind of like that they're both being aggressive and looking for an opportunity here. I mean, if, if Beast takes with the Bishop, we have a borderline symmetrical game here of, of good chess by both sides. You know what's hilarious? Let me blow your mind for a second. If White takes on E5 with the Bishop, which I assume Mr. Beast will, please don't take with a pawn and ruin this. And then if Ludwig plays C5, we literally have an eight. Yeah, so if Ludwig plays C5 here, it is literally symmetrical to the, to the last pawn. Now, will Ludwig he'll... do that? I don't know. He won't. I think he'll do it just for the kicks and gigs of it. That that's you know, Lug is used to throwing for content. No, he didn't. Okay, never mind. <laughs> All right, Bishop D6. Yeah, no. Um it would have been a terrible move. It would not yeah. have been a terrible move. But this is this is double-edged by itself. I'm I'm not saying this is even the best move objectively, but grabbing this pawn is super dangerous, right? Um Beast could even look to play moves like Queen H5 or Queen G4. This is this is spicy, and these guys are both deadlock on the clock. I think Mr. Beast is saying, "Hey, I'm not, I'm not going to be the weakest player in this group, like maybe a lot of people thought I might be." Right. No, and and we've seen that 
from a lot of players so far. Like I said, ratings don't tell the whole story. We even saw that uh, Danny as far back as, as Pog Champs won. We saw people like, I don't know why I remember him specifically, but someone like Slicker, who, you know, you're rating maybe 500, but listen, 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 listen. Let me tell you something about him, listen. Uh, he was actually pretty good. So <laughs> Bishop takes G7, Beast going for it. That was a pretty good little, did you just post out a mini Slicker impression that no one saw coming? Yeah, I, I don't really practice it, but you know, cut me some slack. Nope. <laughs> I'm it just looking good. for an excuse to do more impressions. Most of the things I remember about Slicker from Pog One cannot cannot be talked about. Although, who am I kidding? We have the parental advisory below Chess TV for a reason. Reminder: If you're watching, there is a parental advisory there. You know what show you're getting into. Welcome to Pog Champs Three, presented by Grip Six. Here we go. Uh, rook, rook to G8. Um, so Lud does the right thing on Bishop G7. Bishop E5 is kind of the only move or the best move. But man, this is about to get about to get real spicy. I think. Yeah, so the bishop is hanging, right? Bishop has to, well, probably Mr. Beast will move the bishop. He might move it back to e5, and then Ludwig has his sights aimed at that g2 pawn, but he's got to be very careful, because if he takes that pawn, he might actually get pinned by White's Rook. So there's a lot going on here, and Ludwig might choose to prioritize his development, which is what I would do. Yeah. Oh, and, wow. Mm -hmm. uh, not good. No, it's, it's, it's not the worst move from an idea perspective, everyone, because he's trying to trade bishop right. for bishop, right? And and that's a lot of times where the calculation stops. But the reason Donya and I both grimace is because if Ludwig goes all the way to see Queen H4 check at the end of the line, things could get could get really interesting here. Um and, and Ludwig might already be looking at a check like that. Let's let's take a listen in and see what Lud is thinking about. This pawn I take here. Dame, dame, dame. Let's go for it. No! Fucking idiot. I literally did the wrong one. I literally said out loud what I was gonna do. I think this is fine though, but fuck but he can play it next. Obviously, I just talked about fucking up the structure. Frustrating. Frustrating to play bad, man. Now the check will be very strong on H4. We're gonna we're gonna take Maybe an impromptu listen in here. I could do a tactic though. That's the kind of awesome things we do on the fly. My team yeah. letting me know. That's the cutie's right. cheering on her man and my producer. That's right. Making it happen mm -hmm. right on my cue. Look at that. Distracted. Cutie's got commentary going and now she's gonna mirror herself. It's gonna be wow. awesome. Let's watch it. Oh. That's right. That's Look so at amazing. that. Right on my Look at that. Please, Cutie's got commentary going, and now she's going to Take me off your wow. screen. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. I'm not wearing makeup, and I'm eating please, cheese. This is not. Please, go away. Go to twitch.tv slash cutie cinderella nice. chat. Everybody mean. here, I'm so go to twitch.tv slash cutie cinderella and hit the follow button. Please Do take it, it now. Down. There, there's Do a it game now before she changes it. I don't know why this is happening. Go give her a follow. She deserves it. I'm not wearing deodorant. I have the sausage, though. Please, please go away now. Are you no, gone? Me no, neither. I was just hanging out. For Can cutie. the girl just hang out by herself? Um, okay. And she ain't too shabby herself. Okay. She's working on her chest, too. All right, we're back. Seriously, she's awesome. If you haven't followed her channel, go, go give it. Go give it your follow. All right, G3 was played. This was the line I was predicting, right? With with uh, Queen H4 check, Don. This is, oh, he finds Bishop takes G3 even better. The rook is hanging. Wow, I mean, it's just crazy. And that is just devastation being wreaked upon Black King. That was the whole point of Queen H4 check. And you can just tell by his eyes. He has His eyes are aimed right at White's King, right at White's King's side. And despite the best efforts of Mr. Beast, I mean, Lud is just, he's earning this one. Danny, Seriously, we just, we gotta take our hats off. He's played so well, and I, I, I don't want it to be the storyline. I want to bag on Lud. I can't wait for the No, I'm kidding. No, I, I love the guy, and this is this is his chess. <laughs> Look how good he's gotten here. I mean, he doesn't even settle on Queen E4. He sees the pin, takes on G3, and, and this is just an awesome thing to see where he's uh he's gonna go to and Jimmy has played super well. Mr. Beast has has sur surprised and, and had obviously some some great ideas his openings were good but ludwig just right now just that much that much better 
Absolutely. And you know, Mikhail Tall, right? Whom Ludwig tries to model his games after. You know who his favorite uh, musical, musical composer was? He was asked once, and in a fit of inspiration, he said, Ludwig van Beethoven. Yeah, that was, I, was, I was cooking that up for hours, Danny. Dude, so I mean, this is my moment in the sun. There's a reason we have bad pun emotes for you, like on multiple channels. Well, I'm, I gotta live up to my name. I'm no. literally so the punchline. I hadn't of the made most any awkward. puns. I'm the I'm the punchline of the most awkward, cringeworthy moments we've ever had in chess. But you, dude, you just jumped into the top five with that. That was awesome. Uh, I'm if I make another bad pun, my hair myself might start falling out, and then I'll need a Ludwig. <laughs> I was gonna say uh, who? Oh, it, but... <laughs> who do you want to thank for these horrible? I mean, that was pretty good. I'm just. Oh, I'm dying inside, and this is my job to make people feel this way, bro. Wow, who do you want to thank for for how far you've come with your bad pun game? It, you know, it takes a village, Danny. It takes it takes many people <laughs> to allow me to descend to to such to such depths. It's oh it, really it's taken many years of practice. All right. Well, um, well, what's going on here? Ludwig is playing fantastic chess. He won the exchange with bishop takes g3, a five-head tactic, cleaning up now. He even plays queen takes e4 here, which I think is even better than taking. I mean, g3 is also on the agenda, but I like that he mm -hmm. gets the queen into a strong position. He's playing some of the best chess I've ever seen him play. Seriously. Yeah, he's playing amazing. And, and look at the time consumption. He's not playing too fast, but he's not playing too slow. He's got half his time left. And unfortunately, Beast, one of the things that brought him down is just, you know, he's got a minute on the clock. And uh, for, I mean, Beast is is very, very impressive. And he's going to train a little bit more, Danny. He's going to have a serious shot at winning some of these uh, future matches. Yeah, and maybe the whole event. I mean, obviously, we've been talking about who the strongest players are. Um, super, super hard to predict right now. But I mean, this is this is the kind of chess that, that gets you PogChamp's belts. Yep. That's just although I'll say this, if Ludwig wins, he might be the one person I refuse to send this to. But lock it up. Mm -hmm. Make him come get it himself. He can Is hop that in the so? car and drive. Absolutely. You can make a cross country trip out of it. Yep. All right, Queen takes and, G3 uh, you is know, just like Beth. Wow. Yep, check. King has to get out. This is this is a massacre. Black is not actually up. Well, black is up in exchange in a couple of pawns, but more importantly is the time situation. You know what would be a pretty uh, pretty cool move here, Danny? Castle's long. Okay, he just keeps getting checks. Castle's long would be the uh, the right way fine. to bring this thing to a close for sure. The middle of the heated attack. Terrible. Oh. How could he miss that? Oh, man. oh. Let's tune into Lud and oh, see man. his thoughts on the this final moment. pain. Rook check. Rook defended. Defended here. Must interpose. Oh, that worked out well. I would say so. Pre-move it, because I think it's forced. Oh my king, god, Danny, this there. is too much. When the queen, He's pre-moving it. Uh, we're we're checking like, this again forced. here. Next level stuff. We'll check again here, grab pawn. Like I said, too much Among Us. Who is this imposter? Uh, we're going, going for a mate. There's a bad pun for you. How's that? Bullet World Champion. Wow, I'm mopping yeah, it up here. Oh my gosh. Um, <sighs> Holy shit. Holy that was sick. Of, oh my lands. Oh, let's go, dude. Oh Never have I felt so good on a chess board. I've, I felt so calm today. That was great. That was good chess. Oh. Uh, yes, it was. I'm speechless. Oh my lands. I'm speechless. My my throat is dry. A lot of people said that Rain Wilson was maybe the clear favorite to win, but you know what Dwight Schrute has to say about that? Because I could use some nice Gaia key mm -hmm. for Mate. You could totally use some of that as well. And to enjoy with some of the Pog Champs. And Ludwig, Ludwig, Ludwig just made beverage. a statement and said Rain Wilson is not the favorite in Pog Champs to be presented by Grip Six. White fruit says false, and we'll be right back.
it A or B, man? The fucking fuck, mate, is on A side with the bomb. Shh, shh. It has to be hookah. Did you did you did in a two before or... situation? <laughs> it has to be hookah. Spike planted. Come on. Omen's dying. We're rushing right, you, CC. Rushing you. You win this? Ah, oh, I mean, poo. Whoops. Sorry, chess viewers. My bad. Behave. Yeah, my bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, PG-13. Uh, hey, chess people, are you ready to watch our match against... <laughs> oh. Is it bad if I just insta-forfeit two games in a row? No. Well, that's why that's why you're a big gaping whiner. No, you're racist. <laughs> I'm so good at this game. Cover going out. It's a beast really beast with you. 26 on <laughs> 78 to cipher. Jump out stage. Good. Planted. Possible? Nice. Oh! oh my god! Get her! Oh my god! All you money! Oh, no, what? Nice try, you didn't kill how much nice did you hit her try. for? Yo, 127. What do you mean? That's cap. Alright, guys, come on, let's buy round and uh, let's pick it up. I'm gonna start working long from now on. Yo, do you still play Omen? Mm, not really, because Killjoy's meta, so I play Brim if I need a blind pick. You wanna hear my Omen impression? Snuff nope. Them out. Snuff them out. Lick my nuts. destroyed. He's falling back, falling back too short. Raise Hookah. One ping, one ping. Offside. Uh, I didn't hit him at all. Nading him. One enemy miss... remaining. Where's Jed? I want to satchel her. Last guy, I think, with market. Hold on. Nice job, everybody. Ooh, wait, ooh, wait, ooh, wait. <sighs> There is. Yo. How big are my eyes? How what? How big are my eyes? Uh, they're they're just I don't know. As Did big I, I as a no monster idea. can. I'm just not gonna talk about eyes anymore because I understand that's a sore topic for all of you. <laughs> what are you talking about? I, I literally hey, nothing. No, 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 I'm just raise, saying up, random raise, shit. Raise, raise, just stop. I will. I don't fucking trust me. Oh, okay, I got you, I got you. Yo, Jets and Yuha, going to CT. Yo, Jets in you, CT. I need, you, I need you to run Jet to is me. In CT. Ride, ride to me right now. I bought you the gun. Run to me. Want to flash pipes? Jet is in CT. Careful. Do oh, it. that's not pipes. Uh, one triple. You didn't, you know you didn't pop it, right? Yeah, I know, I know. I fucking She's going telly, it. I think. Thank you, yep. thank you. Yep. I'm smoking hookah. Hold on. I don't hear her. Thunder. Very nice. Revive me, Jet! <laughs> Did you see that post on Reddit, Cole? Revive me. Jet. Revive. Jet. Revive me. Jet. Revive me. Yo, I, I was revive in no me, position. Jet. I'm sorry. Revive me, Jet! Uh, I'll give you a gun. No, no, no. no. I have ulti this round. Oh, what, yo, gun. Hey, they have Cypher yeah, ulti, Omen back, ulti. You got 5k on them. It's a good round for my all. Oh. Yo, come here, come man, here, come here. Oh, raise, 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 yacht. raise, 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 peek this with me. My come. man, Sky. Raise. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. Hook it up, bro. Watch. I'm gonna fake flash. I'm gonna ult and then I'm gonna fake flash, okay? Alright, alright, alright. I'm just gonna 
One showers. Oh, they're like. Oh. Heaven. Omen is heaven. Omen is heaven. A heaven. Dogging. Close. He's there. Heaven. Got him, got him. He's triple. We have bomb. Both triple. I'm not throwing this round, sorry. Oh, uh, he's lit 80. No, both, both A, both A. Fucking lay. One random in your chat, but if, if you want charity, that works nah, as fuck well. Nah, fuck him. Yeah, okay. give it to charity. My chat's Agreed. gonna be so sad right now. <laughs> <laughs> My chat. Oh, they're probably just pogging it out of their mind. No, fuck them on God. They're good. They're good. They're good. You heard it here first, folks. Fuck his chat. <laughs> fuck my chat. Hey, they know. I'm the one who says it to him the most. But uh, either way, my man, um, hype games. I think uh, I think your path is just easy crushing the consolation bracket, which is where all the hype is at anyway, from my experience. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, yeah. Th that's <laughs> a nice way of saying I suck. But I, No, I Danny, will t Danny will back me up here. Going to the loser's bracket was this a decision... I made in the last Pog Champs. No, he, he all the did. good players. And no he almost won the event. <laughs> yeah, yeah and I lost to Charlie in the finals. Mm. And it had more viewers than the winner's bracket because no one gave a shit because it has like <laughs> irrelevant streamers. Like, you know, uh, oh, I'll do some call outs. Sure. Sardosh, uh, <laughs> Daniel Negranu. The fuck is that? Boomer. Uh, yeah. Rain Wilson. Hey, <laughs> 10 so this years time, called. Yeah. You're 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 uh, doing the Lord's work. And you're making sure you get to the finals. So it's I have to go to the finals because I have a chess coach, and he would beat my ass if I didn't go there. So <laughs> this is purely for. Hey, I went up against a man with a chess coach. You know, I, yeah, I, I enjoyed this. Next year, here, next year, can you put it where I play him again first round if if we both make it <laughs> next year? And I'm, I'm down. Actually train next year. I will train. I'll, I'll give myself a chess coach. I'll learn your first seven moves, not your first six. I'll go all out. <laughs> That's going to be the game changer. <laughs> all right. One year, one year from today, we rematch in chess and we, uh, we put, we put, we put high stakes on it. I'll give you I'm my down. stream key and you give me your, you just give me your YouTube channel. Oh, uh, forget, yeah, you forget, can have like, uh, the, the reaction channel. <laughs> this one, this next has year. We've three got channels with 10 mil, bro. <laughs> we've got pod champs coming up. We'll, we'll do another one later this year. So, uh, oh, um, but perfect. anyway, guys, uh, Almost, almost ninety nine percent of that golden banter was was off stream, but we caught the end of it. I heard you say, Ludwig, you're going to donate your ten k to charity, or Beast can choose the charity of his choice. Oh, and you guys were offline. Well, we were online on on my. I didn't realize we were offline. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't want Mr. Beast to give me ten k. I want it to go give it to charity and go make another hype video. But you, because... you forgot the most important part, though. He specifically said, "Fuck his chat." <laughs> yes, that exactly. is another thing. Yeah. <laughs> He did offer the money to my chat, and I said, fuck him on God, and I hold by that statement. <laughs> oh, wait, well, before your eyes, everybody, you can see all the charities that our streaming celebrities have chosen. So there are some really specific ones that are based on their local community and, and kind of really near and dear in their hearts. There are some more well-known mm -hmm. um, global charities there. We see Mr. Beast's charity, St. Jude's. Obviously, we're raising money. Mm -hmm. You can use the charity command or the donate command in chat. We do appreciate all your love, and it's all going wait, to charity. Do I have a charity and, already? Um, it w um okay back to the chess uh mr beast that was that was, no that was <laughs> awesome like, forget what you said no to start it was epic you were i mean yeah. donya and i were blown away by by the opening prep we and then i heard you say to ludwig you know off 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 stream here that you literally he's like a he's more than a one trick pony i mean you could download his games and you've got a map to victory right but then what happened for you after the openings where you, you really started to take a lot of time and then you weren't sure what to do right yeah, so uh, like I was saying to his stream, but for the people who are watching on the chess stream, um, I basically just looked at all his like recent 50 games and just he does the same thing every time based on how you respond. So I had I practiced with my friends. I was like, just do this when I do this. And so like I practiced like 50 games, like the first six moves, but I never wow. played past that part. And so that I just kept, I was like, all right, we're going to get here. And then every time we got there, from that point on, I just fell apart every game. Because I, I I don't practice a fraction as much as he does. He's obviously the better player. Well, um, what so was going through your next head? Next year, or whenever you... we do this again, though, I'm really going to I'm gonna get a coach and take it serious. But you, you, got, you got pressured, obviously, <laughs> by his prep. But then you held on. Because obviously, we were really applauding Jimmy's uh, preparation and his approach at this point. 
But even more impressive was the fact that you kind of handled this and you didn't get down on time and you, you kept your head. So what were you thinking? Did you kind of, you smelt a rat that he was prepared, but how, what was going through your head? Me? Yeah. Oh, dude, game one. So back up a bit. If you go to like, I forget the move, but I felt like he could have gone night, a similar trick I did earlier to B4. And I was stressed out about that. And then when I attacked his queen uh, a little bit later, yeah. uh, I was also stressed out that, um, that he would just take with his pawn and ignore his queen. And then he would fork my queen and rook. And I was stressed oh, out about that. I know what that. you're talking about. This position here. Yeah, I kept getting into ugly situations. Mm -hmm. And all I said to myself, I was like, damn, hope you don't do that. And he did it. <laughs> and he did it. And he ended up, thankfully, just uh, giving away the queen here. But uh, he found himself in a beautiful spot here. I felt like shit. I mean, if he just took with that pawn there, that knight, that bishop, and I, I get a queen from it, but I lose three minor pieces. That's uh, not that great. It's equivalent in points, but it's pretty down in terms of uh, his attack that I'll have on me. So I felt really bad, but thankfully, it's not what happened. Yeah, but um, thankfully, I suck. <laughs> yeah well i think i think shockingly i think uh you are like really good positionally which is like weird and i am only good like tactically and so you always got in better positions but i just don't think you had like the uh which i think is just a practice thing straight up i think so, you practice, so if we oh, combine God, our talents we make one decent chess player yeah if yeah uh, that's what i'm saying that's i'm going to secretly wiretap you in on a zoom call for every future <laughs> chess match to hopefully help yeah. you beat have me uh, beat everyone well then wow. you had a great position again as as white uh and, and so what was what was the prep here right we saw that you got a great position and lud by the way that's some five head analysis i mean dude you're literally seeing the board super well because you're totally right yeah. he could have he could have gone for this and he didn't so yeah. in the next game you also had some prep Mr. Beast, but where, where did it go wrong here? Or where did you not know anymore uh, in terms of what he was going to do? Uh, so if you just, I can tell you, just rewind it to the start. What color am I? White. I can literally, so I, I go D4 first, and then he always mirrors it. Mm -hmm. um, True. Yeah, and then, then I moved my, uh, yeah, that pawn, and then he always moves one of his knights out, and then I, I move one of mine. And I'm pretty sure his next move is to move a knight out, right? Right or, or yeah. that or mm -hmm. and uh, think, he think, likes yeah and he likes to uh, that I probably moved my other knight and then he likes to move his light square bishop out somewhere <laughs> so cold out right now <laughs> uh, he, and a lot of the games I saw he would put it on d seven but I I was whenever he did this he would put it there um, and now I'm starting to draw a blank it's easier to remember when I'm like actually playing um, but yeah you can like get to this part and i asked like uh gotham i was like is is this good for me and he's like yeah this is a good position and so i was like all right i made it my objective just to get this board right here and then um yeah just keep developing pieces so i can castle john you future after that, Danya, I advice, like, I don't advice know for jimmy do. the next time he gets this against ludwig <laughs> well oh. i think one thing you could do is you could take that pawn if we actually go back to the very beginning after knight f6 move two Taking the pawn on d5 is a good idea, Beast, and then following up by controlling the center with e4. Um, what do you have to say to that, Ludwig? Is your Dvoretsky endgame manual helping you deal with that? Uh, yeah, because I would go back <laughs> and then, you know what? Here's my take. I, and this is why I play the same thing every time. Openings are bullshit and no one gives a fuck. As long as you get all your pieces out and you control the center, right? No one here is good enough to hold a lead. We saw Rain yep. Wilson choke 18 different ways. <laughs> so as long as I don't make a giant blunder, if positionally I am down, because there's one theoretical line where if Danya was in this spot, he would walk down <laughs> to this beautiful <laughs> win. I'm fine. So I, uh, my thought process was, hey, let's just get my shits out. Let's just do my thing. I will say what it did screw me on was time. Oh my God. Yeah. I was so slow. I was molasses because I had to think really hard. But uh, I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't too worried as long as I didn't make a giant mistake. Well, let's talk about the time. Oh, we were impressed. You, you play, I, was, I was singing your praises, even though it was against every fiber of my being. My being I was yeah. singing your praises. And I was saying that uh -huh. one of the things you get credit for is that when he kind of out-prepped you, 
you 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 handled the clock super well. You never got way down on time. Was that a conscious effort? Are you working on that? Like what 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 was the I think deal? There? I was way down on time, and then I was like, I gotta go faster, and so I just started planning out moves, but they weren't good ones. So like that's like where I ran into the bishop attacking queen. I planned that attack, but it wasn't a good attack, and I knew that, but it's all I could think of, and so. Uh, same with when he took uh, game two, Bishop, and then he went to uh, take the pawn on, what was it, like G7, whatever that is. Uh, and I brought my rook out. I thought that was also bad because it, you know, it didn't, it worked out tactically because I had a few things that happened. But I was, I don't think my moves were good. I just had a plan and I stuck to it and I tried to play quick. You did at the end. We were impressed with your speed and your accuracy at the end. Whatever it is you're doing, maybe you are cracking open Dvoretsky's in game manual. Like, Keep doing it, but beast, not nice. to take anything away from you. That was a great opening, great play all around. Yeah, awesome. beast, young god, young god. Seriously. I don't know how you have the time, man. Um, anyway, <laughs> now that you followed me on Twitter, I'm going to DM you daily for advice on thumbnails. Let's do it. What, what's your next video? Or actually, I probably, I probably don't want this on a chess stream, a <laughs> YouTube strategy. <laughs> My next video is how I beat Mr. Beast for $10,000. Uh, we'll oh, that that's a it. banger. He carves <laughs> most viewed videos, him shitting on me in chess. Wait, so really? Say for you. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. interesting. The $10,000 thing See, that happened. Let's bring it up. You, you want to put a picture of me like about to cry in the thumbnail because then people <laughs> will think I'm like pissed off. All right, yeah. We'll, we'll have Carl bully you for a while. <laughs> Well, you guys, uh, you added the stakes, and um, I know it's a, a lot of fun in games, but seriously, I mean, it's another $10,000 to charity. Big reason why we're doing this. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Um, Jimmy, I know I know you're, you're going to keep working on it, and, and jokes aside, seriously, that was super impressive, and I agree with Ludwig. I don't even know that it has to be in the consolation bracket. I think your uh, PogChamp's future is bright. Bud, I, I don't know what to say, man. I, I don't know who you are anymore. Like, who is this imposter? <laughs> like, what is going on with you? Just keep doing it, I guess. Just studying a bit here and there. All I got to say is one final message to chat. If you guys go out and beat Danny's bot on <laughs> chess.com, he'll give you a free diamond membership <laughs> if you screenshot it and send him proof. Everybody, let's do it. That's, no free one can do diamond that. Membership. Everyone's already beaten your bot, and they've sent it to me. I got so many diamond memberships I got to give away. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Dude, my <laughs> bot trash. What do you want from me? He just says the plan is simple and then chokes. All right. Well, this isn't uh, over. We're going right, to leave it guys. at that. All right, All right, good luck Thanks in the next round, guys. Later, Mr. everybody. You're awesome. Pleasure, Thanks, guys. And we'll, we'll see you. We'll see you in your next match. Thanks. Peace. Bye. All right, that was awesome. All right. Indeed, that was crazy high quality chess. And if only we had one more matchup, Danny. But wait, we actually we do. <sighs> yeah, I mean, um... honestly, what you said is true. That. Uh, the chess was awesome, and shout out to to Levy Rosman. I didn't know if I was allowed to say that he was he was uh, Mr. B's secret coach, but then uh, Jimmy revealed it himself. He worked with Gotham. So, in addition to apparently doing a good strategy, what do you think about that strategy, John? Of play, having your friends play a bunch of games with the opening moves of your opponent, right? Which is how he helped. That apparently that helped him memorize. In addition to working with Levy this morning, which is awesome. Um, I, I think that Jimmy's future in this event may surprise people, especially after what we just saw here. That's some next level scouting. That's a, uh, you know, Russian grandmaster kind of territory. And uh, his Not openings like are profit, awesome. Though. He's showing, well, he's getting there though. I mean, he, he predicted what Ludwig was going to do. He was better at it both games. So uh, he's definitely going to say, going to make his presence felt this puck champs. And he's going to be a fixture uh, for sure. As he gets more training in. Yeah, uh, for sure, and and it was awesome. I can't wait for both of them to play their next Masters, but we also have one more match today. Don't go anywhere, chat. Pog Champs 3, presented by Grip6, continues in just a few moments. Introducing the Grip6 belt, the only belt on the market with a no-gut pinch guarantee. The Grip6 is so light and thin that you'll barely even notice it's there. Its smooth, low-profile design makes this belt the most comfortable belt in the world. Overly confident much? You're damn right. Because on top of being the most comfortable belt in the universe, each Grip6 belt comes with our A3 Garandam T. Meaning if you don't like any belt for any reason at any time or in any condition, you can just contact us and we'll give you a full refund. Welcome in, guys. I know we're going. I'm going up against the top seed in our bracket right now, so it's like. Uh...
We're just gonna try to do our best. That's what that's our focus. Do our best for today's match. Do our absolute best. You got that shit, don't worry. I mean, we're gonna, I mean I'm not I'm gonna try my best. We'll see what happens. We're gonna try, I'm gonna try my best. I like to move. Um, oh. Some different music, real quick. Oh, oh boy! Did you get another lesson with Maurice? I did a little lesson with Maurice after our first one, but other than that, not really. <clears throat> um, no. Okay. Move. Why to move? There we go. Reach deep into yerba mate culture and you discover people have long gathered to imbibe mate to awaken the mind, perform extraordinary feats, and exchange confidences. Brewed from the naturally caffeinated and nourishing leaves of the species of holly native to the South American Atlantic rainforest, come to life with Guayaquil's wide assortment of yerba mate offerings, all with powers to unite and energize. And we are back here. We've had a lot of new subscribers today. Thank you for that support. Um, and it also gives you access to the Gaia Key emote in chat. And if you didn't know, Gaia Key, their Yerba Mate is celebrating 25 years as your favorite regenerative beverage. They're sharing cases to celebrate. They're not kidding. I've got a ton in the office and I poured it into my white fruit mug. And damn, was that stuff delicious. It doesn't have corn syrup. I don't know if you know that. I'm an anti-corn syrup guy. I freaking loved the Gaia Key or Ramate, and I'm going to keep drinking it. And uh, a lot of our players and commentators have gotten some too. So you can get some cases if you spam the emotes, but you got to start doing it right now. The other thing we're going to do <laughs> right now is talk about Hand and Brain. Danya Naroditsky, what's your favorite part of Hand and Brain as a format? What I love the most is uh, when one person very vehemently wants one move and then the other person plays another move. And <laughs> that anger and suppressing that, because you got to keep the chemistry going. You can't just yell at someone. Right. And, and what I also love is the person playing a different move than originally intended, but that move turns out to be better. So right. there's so much that's really cool about that dynamic. No, I love that you just said that the biting of the, of the tongue, so to speak, when like you don't want to ruin your chemistry with your you know, higher rate or lower mm -hmm. rate of partner. So you don't get, you don't get pissed, but you, you're clearly unhappy. Um, but uh, anyway, that's awesome. Just a reminder, the Twitch Rivals event on March 2nd, will have $35,000 in prize money, homie. Um, a lot of your favorite streamers, both of the variety and other game category and chess will be in it. Budwig, Boy Boy, our first ever Pog Champs champion will be back. Botez Live and Hikaru are involved. All kinds of awesome chess streamers and Members of other categories, like I said. So mark your calendar for March 2nd. All right, Danya. Myth and Sardosh, mm -hmm. a guy that has come out of nowhere and been on the grind, establishing himself as maybe the favorite to win it all in, in the French streaming Sardosh. And then you've got Myth, who's getting better with every show. He started do, doing lessons with Maurice Ashley. Um, your thoughts on the matchup we're about to see? Well... Definitely Sardosh pulling pulling a Hafu. He's been grinding. I mean, the legends have been going around, uh, but obviously I wouldn't sleep on Myth. I mean, we've already seen this play out again and again. Uh, it's easy to underestimate someone when uh, you've got his opponent grinding like Sardosh does. He's, he's clearly the favorite, Danny. I think there's no denying that. 
But uh, I think the game, you know, when the bright lights are shining, uh, the game is often closer than, uh, you know, it, it seems to be on paper. Yep. No, and, and that happened in the first match with Nico. Sardosh um, ultimately did prove to be the better player. You know, he, he got the, the W, but Nico, um, Hikar and I were, were saying, I mean, she had some moments where her intuition, her feel for, for certain things was not only spot on, but her speed was super impressive. Maybe it actually kind of backfired if she had slowed down a little bit with some of the advantages she had. Sardosh, maybe not, you know, maybe not uh, have, have walked away with a victory there. So, um, so yeah, I think, uh, I think Myth knows he's the underdog, but he's here to continue to rock and get better. He's enjoying it. And Sardosh, Sardosh admitted he was, he was nervous after that, uh, after that um, first match with Nico. Mm -hmm. So he knows there's a lot of pressure on him. And yeah, all right. We, uh, we're a couple yeah, minutes away there, from game time. There is. Your thoughts on your and, Mate? Yeah, to your way, point I'm about really pressure, this stuff all the time. I'm just getting into <laughs> it. I had no idea. I've I've been having it for years, actually, um, truly, and I like the taste. It's uh, it's it's pleasant, and uh, people on my stream know that I don't, you know, I don't give my approval to something that I don't actually like. Uh, and also, it has the word Mate, and in many languages, well, obviously, that means mate. So you got to drink something that contains the word mate. God, so grandmaster dude, approved your puns are just i mean i'm so past the point of cringing i'm like i'm just impressed i mean it's uh it just comes naturally you no know? it just comes it's it's my greatest talent let's say shall so. we say well now that's too i want i was gonna include the name myth but um yeah it's it it's, the, uh, it, it's as stale as a can of sar sardines or sardosh. <laughs> sardosh, sardoine. I just I need to I need to stop Sar talking. I, I've struggled with how to say his name a lot. Uh, sardosh, sardosh. So, uh huh. Yeah, French. Not my specialty. Yeah, but sardosh sounds pretty natural. Yes, it's sardosh. It's easier for me to speak American. Um, just kidding. It's English. Likewise. Or, but okay, Russian maybe. But the easier for me to say Russian names, but okay, French is not so easy. Um, all right. Well, the uh, the chat is ready. We've got Myth and his normal streaming setup, where his fans have grown to know and love him. Mm -hmm. Dardosh is um. Sometimes he gets so focused, he goes full Fabi, full Fabiano, where all we got is the forehead and the hairline. I right? never go full Fabi. Uh huh. But. Maybe come close. Yeah. Wow. And uh, that's he is a grinder, and you can see his rating here. Wow, that's he's almost fourteen hundred, Danny. That's pretty darn impressive. He is pulling a hafu. By the way, apparently the reason why the games haven't started is because Sardosh started a practice game, which is why we're tuning in to watch because wow. Myth is. Oh, that is actually rating. his live game. Huh. Oh, wow. You can't get enough training. Myth is like, I stopped my games and then he started one. What is going on? This is crazy. He's not doing too well here, but he's getting the, the L's out out of the way. Yeah, he's almost 14 rapid. Is guy is put in the time. Oh, he's going to get checkmated, though. Yeah, if, if, Rook if Rook C8 is found, it's, it's, it's Rover, Red Rover. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, he's just got to get the blunders out of the way. Yeah, he's going to resign. Ooh, I like it. Nice. All in French. Whoa, he's starting another game? Oh, did Don't he start him. another game? Someone go abort. Okay, good. Ooh, the staff was aborted. Aborted. Did he no, play the did grub, Danny? Did I just see him play the grub? Somebody shut down that man's ability to start games. <laughs> there we go. I love how we keep aborting. Myth. Oh, now we started the myth game. Okay, there we go. Nice. Game on. <laughs> this guy was like an there addict. There we go. Stop. You're right. It was just, I got to get another game. I got to get another game. Oh, man. That was hilarious. Wow. All right. Yep. But he plays the Grob. Now, that is... Uh, we'll see what he does with white. Now, he's... Uh, Sardos playing black here. Myth is white. And an open Sicilian day. Okay. 
I'd rather have an open Sicilian than a closed Sicilian, I say. Um, I don't know where Definitely. that came from. And, but... No, that was a very wise statement. I'm still, you know, I'm still considering its implications. And a Nidorf played by Sardosh. And the Nidorf is sort of a big boy opening. It's just not something you waltz into if you haven't studied openings. It's very theoretical. You got to know a lot of stuff. And uh, E6, he's playing it professionally so far. But yes, so Smith. This, this, after seeing the first one, and I know that Nico, uh, he held her own in that match. He ultimately got the draw in the end. Um, but seeing seeing some of the tactics that Sardosh un, un, unfurled, this Rook takes G2 thing, um, and, and just the way he's playing this opening here, I mean, I don't think there's any question anymore as far as time this guy is putting in and how strong he is. Yeah. For sure. And these pawns on E6 and D6 then are called the Skeven Engen structure. I think it's named after a, a city, I think, in the in the Netherlands where and you'll see that some openings and structures are named after cities. And usually that's because uh there was a tournament held in that city where that particular opening was was sort of first played. But I'm actually impressed, and I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but I'm honest here, Myth is developing his pieces in a really nice way. He's positioned his pawns kind of like vampire teeth, clamping down on the center, but Nerdiski Jinx may strike again. I'm not a big fan of that one. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I was about to compliment in the same way and highlight that you talked about the Shevaningan structure. If we talk about myth structure, this is known as a Meroxy bind structure, clamping down, like you said, particularly on the white squares. If myth had just played knight c3, and a lot of the moves here are very natural. You put the rooks in the center. The queen finds any number of squares. And white typically has an edge, just, just like the, the eval bar says. Queen a4 is one of those moves that sometimes happens for inexperienced players where after doing the, the logical things, they, they want to be like, all right, well, now I got to go do something, got to be aggressive. And I think it, it takes a while for the patience to, to come in where you realize actually doing something good is sometimes just building your strength, developing your pieces behind your furthest advanced pawns. Um, and not having to look to to make aggressively, you know, optically aggressive looking moves. So anyway, but I do like the last couple moves by Myth, and I think we have a very equal middle game ahead. We absolutely do. He dials it back, which is good. Make sure that all his pieces are safe. Now, Sardosh is probably going to develop his knight. He's got one more piece left to develop. And my guess is he's probably attracted by knight g4. Now he develops his knight. Uh, and then he might bring his rook into c8 and x-ray the queen. That would be one way the black could continually put pressure on white center. Now, black is cramped, but that's kind of the point. Uh, you don't have to have a lot of space in chess to have a good position. Black's got a lot of ways that he can break through, and uh, white's pieces could end up being overextended. Very well said, and I think this is a critical moment. So let's let's go in and see how uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. TSM Myth is doing in terms of what he's thinking about. Fascinating. Okay. Are my headphones working? Focus. Yes. Oh, yeah, a, yeah. This is a weird game. On yeah, he said something. Very, very tight knit here. Like, I wonder when this is all going to explode, you know? Okay. Oh, maybe that's when it. <laughs> all right. Maybe, maybe the time is soon. What is he Rush setting this for? Mm -hmm. He understands that this is intense. This position is. Wow. And decide. Knight d2 would be better, but the reason is kind of complicated. Ooh, almost mm. did it. Almost, but now Sardosh has this move. Knight to a5, knight to the side, attacking the queen. Queen has to move, and then you win that pawn on, on c4. Yeah, he will he find it? what was the best move several moves if he had played knight c3, but the position got specific enough where the knight on d2 was the better square. Good pin. So, but I don't know that Sardosh will see 9 a 5 We'll see. Pawn. I move my bishop here. There's no threat. Right. 
He might play knight e5 work. instead. He might want to go to the center. But he does get the move back. It's not like a crazy thing. But it does help hmm. advance. I think... I think I want to go for a pawn break here. It's just so intense, Danny. <laughs> e5. Oh, okay. So just... he's, he's trying to go for the first one. That, that shows you... Let's hmm. come back to the board here. I mean, that, that shows you, even, even though Sardosh has been applauded for the Night Orphan, obviously one of the stronger players, maybe the man to beat, this shows you that for, even for him, Danya, once he did the opening correctly, Kevin Ingen, his lack of experience, right? There's only so many book smarts you can have, right? Your actual experience is another thing. It's hard to know what to do with these pawn structures because often here for Black as well, he should have been patient or found your Knight A5 move and, and just built strength. It's hard to sit on a center sometimes as you're learning the game, and e5 was a potentially a very bad move because of these light score problems here for Black. Yeah, you're you're absolutely on the money, Danny, and that, as you said, is the danger of playing these openings, where you have to think creatively in order to play well. And I love what Myth did here, Knight to f5. He's playing aggressively, purposefully, and that d5 square is indeed very very weak. Now Sardosh. I mean, he doesn't have to take the knight, but it probably would be a good idea to get that knight off the board. He's also got a little bit less time. So we kind of called it, you know, all of these games are a lot closer than they may appear on paper. No, 100%. I mean, we've, we've had a lot of surprises in, in, in a lot of good ways where every, I mean, Mr. Beast, last time, I mean, we had, uh, now we've got, I mean, this is, a, this is a position where objectively, if you forgot who the players are, I mean, White... White has a lot of potential here to be much better. This d5 square is going to be a problem for the rest of the game. And it's also almost an easier position for Myth to play because this bishop is bad. This square is weak. Like, Black has more long-term problems that would take a lot of experience to outmaneuver. White's position is kind of just easier to play here right now. It absolutely is. You could bring the rooks in. You could prepare to position the knight on d5. I agree. And that is being reflected in the time consumption Sardosh, not concerning yet, but if he takes two more minutes, you know, then things start getting a little bit dicey for him. And if I were him, I would put a rook on c8. I would try to create some threats, do something tricky, maybe target that c4 pawn. That move to the side of the board, knight a5, is still interesting, but it's not a move that's easy to see, Danny, if you're not very familiar with this position as you were talking about. Yep. No, and, it, and it's already lost some of its punch. It was it obviously would have won the pawn earlier when the queen had nowhere to go. Now, if you play knight a5, the queen can even make the most natural move for a player of a lot of levels, queen a4, and black is in trouble. So this will be a good test. Can myth maintain... I was just going to say, can he maintain the time advantage and just and just play quick logical moves? It, this, this, isn't, this isn't a totally bad move, but it's, it's definitely overly aggressive. And if Sardosh sees knight g4, oh man, mm -hmm. suddenly the dark squares are backfiring for white. So... Um, again, this is one of those signs we talk about where players learn over time, like once you have an advantage, sometimes the simplest moves are how you build on that strength. I keep using that term. You're building your pieces behind your pawns for their potential rather than kind of lashing out for one move threats. And, and um, anyway, still totally anybody's game. And I'm just nervous now about what could happen on the dark squares for myth. Likewise. And another way to think about why F4 is... Not such a good move is because, well, first of all, you push a pawn in front of your king, not directly in front of your king, but in that general vicinity, which weakens the diagonal. And also, if you take a look at that bishop on e3, you've got to be super careful about it because it's lost its defender. Now it's undefended, which means that if uh, Sardosh attacks it, um, that's another threat that uh, Myth has to worry about. Sardosh could now take either with the knight to threaten the d3 bishop, or he could take with the rook to threaten uh, the bishop I was just talking about. I would probably take with the knight or even the pawn in order to secure that d4 square in the center. Yeah, agreed. Pawn takes here. You know, also knight takes, hits this bishop and has a discovery maybe on the next move, which a discovery is when you move a piece to unleash an attack of another piece behind it. So, yeah, okay, he takes with the rook. This is kind of the most straightforward. You feel like you, you got to deliver a punch move because it immediately creates an attack. But knight takes actually had, it's more like more like putting gunpowder in the gun, right? Knight takes was actually mm -hmm. a little more powerful um, and because of the discovery tactic that we talked about. Okay, but I, either way, these guys oh, wow. are playing really, really good chess. This is very close. Still anybody's game. Yeah, now there's, there's a really awesome move. Rook takes bishops. Now, Myth has defended it, 
But because he's weak in that diagonal by pushing his F-pawn, uh, Sardos could take the bishop and play queen to b6, but that's a super advanced tactic, Danny. And knight g4 is also really good. And here we see Myth starting to pay the price for that weakening move. And that is what could end up really hurting him. He's got to be super careful. And the weakening move we're talking about is that move just a few moments ago, f4, if you're just tuning in or kind of reminder of the big picture. Because if this bishop moves to the wrong square, just to show, I mean, moves like this come in and the game is, is, is almost over because black is going to grab the dark squares and all kinds of dangerous things are going to happen to the White King. So this is a very, very scary proposition here. Okay, knight d5. What a and move an by excellent Look move. At that. Wow. That is the only move, actually. That is the only good move, and he finds it. That was huge. And it also shows the recognition that this knight left the square behind. So it's, it's the best defense is a good offense, right? He defends the bishop and attacks the queen. Oh, man. And he's also up two minutes on the clock. This is going to yeah. come down to the wire. Below five minutes now for Sardosh. He spent more than half his time. And we know what happens when these players, they dip to two minutes, one minute, Danny. They're not as experienced in bullet chess, one minute right. chess. So they start to panic. And that is a very, very important consideration. Two whole minutes up on the clock. Myth is looking good here. Yeah, and if this queen moves to the wrong square, Myth could save his dark square bishop and attack the rook. And suddenly you just, you look at snapshot and it feels like all white's pieces are on really good squares. If he owns the E-file... But yeah, this is a critical moment for Sardosh, and I think he's gonna I think he's gonna spend on the whole other minute maybe thinking about it. I mean, this is this is a tough position, and you can see how zoned in he is. Let's take a listen into Myth yep. who's talking to us about his ideas. Is it on the map or on the board? He plays his queen up to pressure my rook. It's actually a really good move. Actually, not if he plays the right response. Hmm. Yeah, but it, it's a strong idea by Sardosh for sure, right? At least the. But like this move doesn't really do anything game. because at the end of the day, like I just take his queen. So this isn't really that big of a deal. Excellent. Matter of fact, it's actually. He just opened up this rook take for me. Oh my God. He opened up this pawn for wow. me. This was a oh misplay by lands. him, I think. Oh my lands. I love his thought process. I've been watching him solve puzzles and... Oh, well, I guess he could go for knight. Oh, no, he could go for my knight. Maybe that's not what I'm looking at. Maybe that's something I'm not looking at. Is the fact that he could take my knight here for free. This is the pawn That might be the... Trust yourself. Yeah, that might be the kicker that he's actually going for. No! No, take the B7 pawn. He'll drop the bishop if he moves the knight. Hmm. Trust yourself. Got to go with your gut and chest. I want to sing like Elsa. Ah, so Trust okay, yourself. I see. Wait, Don't move the yourself. bishop either because he'll drop the rook. I'm going to do it. Hmm. So he's threatening two pieces at once right now. Three pieces, actually. Nope. He's starting to see ghosts. Need to figure out actually not threatening, threatening anything. I think my best move is... I wonder why he gave up on Queen 7 because he said it. Yeah. He thought the knight was hanging with that pawn on C4. He is defending, directly defending the knight. You like that he's taking his time, though, because maybe he'll come back to finding Queen he only has two threatens here. All right, so maybe if I go knight b6, it'll like divert his attention here. And I have two takes here for his two. So he takes, I take, take, take. Or if he doesn't do anything around that and he like plays around here, then I get his knight as well. Uh, let's do that. Let's see how that plays out. Maybe that's not the right move. Interesting, but it, it does drop the piece if Sardosh reacts quickly. If he takes that knight, Myth will lose the piece. Come back not like this? Oh, oh, shit. That was... So the reason it's losing everybody, Myth was right about the fact that he has the pieces defending, but exactly, he forgot that the knight was crucial defending the bishop, and Sardosh doesn't have to be asked twice. 
Oh, man. Yeah, but he, Sardos with an, a bit of an inaccurate move, though. He allows Smith to take the rook. Sardos should have taken the knight first. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. He should have taken Okay, so actually, see if Myth follows through on the idea of why the knight moved there. Now, but I was the thing say, is that... Mm -hmm. go, no, you go ahead. I was just going to say quickly that that in the, in the grand scheme of things, Sardosh played the right move because he can slide his queen over to c5 to prepare a discovered check. But I think judging by his facial reaction, he actually missed the fact that the rook was hanging. We'll see. Right. Yeah, if he finds queen c5, everyone, this this was actually exactly what This rook is so irrelevant to the position. They're threatening some of the most famous mating nets in the world, right? Mm. Venus fly traps and dart and back rank mates are, are on the agenda. So if he sees queen c5, uh, Ardosha's just really on track for a, for a pog champs victory, I think. And that's a really strong move. Um, he's nervous. He's nervous. Yep. And he's only got three minutes. You can tell he's grabbing his head. And I think he missed knight takes eight. That unsettled him. Will he gather himself together here? Like D4 is also not oh, a bad no. move. It shows mm -hmm. he recognized the dark squares, but not winning like queen c5 would have been. Right, now Myth has to take that pawn on b7. His queen is, queen is under attack. He's got to play aggressively here. See that the pawn on b7 is hanging. All right, let's listen in. See if Myth is on track with that idea. And I could get out of it by taking pawn. Off we go. I could. Wow. Like, trust himself though. It's definitely an option. Overthinking um, it. Like this is taken. I can't move here. I can't move here. I can't move anywhere here. I can't move here. I can't move here. But I think the uh I think yeah, so that forces me to go for this pawn, I'm pretty sure. Fuck. Alright, I take pawn. Brilliant. I think that's a good move. Even, even like that's my only move there to get my queen out of danger. I feel like he's out of that was a good move. <laughs> he's got to move into position to attack. Mm. Queen d2 will be very strong here. Yeah, let's come back to the these, board these, to show again. Uh, his knights are going to be like Ob objectively. Black is still winning. Queen d2 is super strong. I think even putting the queen on c5 is still super problematic. Yeah. But but this was an aggressive move that he, Myth needed to play because if Sardosh doesn't convert Queen C8, Queen B8, and back okay. C2, exactly the kind of mistake you can make. You could trade and then trade. Still have ideas of Queen coming in. Right. This is a, but this is anyone's game. Make no mistake. The yep. eval bar is not important here. Time scramble. This is what we signed up for. Now Myth has to take that knight and then take Sardosh's rook. Otherwise, he's going to lose one of these two rooks. This is a fork. Yeah, a fork is when a knight or pawn attacks two pieces at once. You can also call it a double attack. But uh, this move is is crucial because it, it's going to force Myth to have to stay aggressive. And, and what I was going to compliment earlier, Donya, the night we were listening in, was one thing I, I've noticed he does, is partly because he solves so much puzzles. Myth does a great job the moment someone plays a move. His first instinct, unlike a lot of people, is he always looks for their threat. Like, you can hear it in his thought mm -hmm. process. He talks about the rook, right? Even if he doesn't see right away that... You know, the rook is protected or, or the knight had protection is c4 pawn his mindset is very prophylactic he's always looking for it and i think as he learns different concepts donya and gets better it's going to make him a very good player I, I really believe that no he's got that correct logic in place and that just that doesn't come easy and unfortunately he blunders that rook i think he got attracted danny by that bishop but the thing is the bishop isn't hanging it's defended yep. by the queen and Sardosh will, takes the correct rook, and the, look at the queen. It's defending both the knight and the bishop. White is down a piece. Now his initiative fizzling out. But what an effort in the middle game here by, by Myth. But Sardosh staying strong in the critical moments and speeding yep. up when he had to. Uh, Hess talks about this a lot, right? Retreating moves are just the ones you miss a lot, especially in Blitz. And this is, I think you're 100% right. That's exactly what he missed with queen d7. Just literary, li literary, literary. And I need to go back to the school for kids who don't read good. I cannot be literary yet. Anyway, Queen D7 just missed that this was on the agenda, and now he's going to pay the price. I, I think I think Andreas will win this one with two minutes on the clock. Yeah, and you can just tell, I think, he's, he's still nervous, but 
I think he senses that the game has turned around and now the clock, not Myth's friend either. He's got now down to a minute. Yep. Unfortunately for white, there's no checks against black skin. Everything is protected. So just down a piece. Now white skin is the one on the chopping block. Yeah. I see chat saying and agree. He's definitely better than 495. The moment some of these things oh, yeah. start coming together, Myth is going to make, I think, bigger leaps than, than people will expect because he's doing so many things right. But, um, He's kind of almost too defensive minded in some ways. Um, yeah, I mean, he, he, you know, it's easy for us to say, you, know, you got to trust yourself. Everybody does that to a degree. But um, he really, as you said, Danny, he really does zero in on the right things almost immediately. And that is just not something that anyone takes for granted. That's that's some talent right there. Great. And it's funny that there's an outside chance that something weird happens here. If, if Sardosh takes this knight with the bishop mm -hmm. and this check comes in and if black wonder something like king h7 oh wait i forgot the knight was even attacking the vision never mind even this doesn't work because i was gonna go for some <laughs> well, fancy thing like this and highlight exactly like the eval bar said it's made but the mm -hmm. bishop is even hanging so super tough but anyway there, there are some maybe outside chances there's only a minute for sardosh too so this is good oh he did take he took with the bishop oh, he if, takes if myth gives check and he moves the king instead of blocking with the bishop we could have a wild ending like i just predicted yeah, if Myth sees that lobster pincer theme, um, and I think Myth is going to give the check on C8, that's really the only thing he can do here. Unfortunately, I'm worried that he's just panicking and yeah. the chance is vanishingly small, but nonetheless, our Doge stepping up in the critical moment here. Got to give him some credit. And B4 by Myth, that's a really interesting move. He's distracting the queen yeah. from its defense of the bishop. Oh my gosh, this... Okay, just to show real quick before we listen in, if the queen takes and this check happens, now there's no bishop d8. Black would still be winning, but now you have to see this retreating move. Otherwise, g6 and you get mated on f8. So let's listen into myth and see what happens here. But this this mm -hmm. could still be a wild finish. Below a minute now. <laughs> Actually good. Mm, so this gives me what? This gives me free. The discover check is going to be devastating. Or no, she's so. Knight g4 is crushing. Okay. Yeah. This too. Things aren't as bad as they used to be. Uh -oh. oh, maybe I lied. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. What am I? Oh wow, that's check. Oof. C5. You block a pawn. I don't see five, right? Oof. We don't block a pawn. Only move to a checkmate. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's still that wild checkmate. Okay, queen wait, dude, my queen is queen stuck. Oh my god! Oh, it's wait. setting up the mate. No, wait. Oh, oh no! Oh, you panicked. It was mate, regardless. Oh, it all goes downhill, dude. It goes south so fast. Oh no! Made two for Sardosh. GG. Good game, my guy. Wow, what an intense game, Danny. Seriously. That was crazy. Good game. Guess what? They got another one. If that was tough. Last scene in defeat. That was a lot closer, I think, than, than people. I mean, that almost had. If he doesn't play queen d4 and, and, and Sardosh doesn't check on the next move, this idea of f6 setting up the checkmate was what we had been looking at for a while. That was that was super wild, and I thought we might have a fall out of your chair uh, moment. Luckily, I have a chair with back support now. We've been upgrading the office <laughs> a little bit, and I feel a lot better. That was that was such a smooth transition, Danny. I have, I have no words. But they've got a second game, and uh, Myth has just put everyone on notice that he is he is here to play, and he is going to deal some blows, and he almost did in this game. I mean, uh, Ludwig said Mr. Beast has got the, you know, consolation bracket victory written all over. I think Myth, too, because we know he's he's continuing to grind and get better throughout the whole event. These games are are really showing uh, a, a different player than, than one that um, we saw first learning the game on his streams a few weeks ago. So, all right, we're going to take a break. We have our last game of the day. Don't go anywhere. It's Pog Champs 3 presented by Grip 6. Final game of the day when we return. Dang it, man. Dude, the time was ticking. I was under pressure. Oh, no.
I just needed to use my eyeballs. Wait, but wasn't I, wait. No, wait, no, I couldn't have. No, I couldn't have. Maybe like, okay, wait, hold up. Maybe I could have done it. Let's see where I could have done it. If I would have moved on now, now and gone for this? No, no, I don't have this, I think. I don't think I have this ever because I move pawn, he takes, and then his, this just has a slot. So even if I go here, I never get that. I could get the check, but I don't think I ever get the mate here. Does that make sense? Yeah, I don't think I ever get the mate. Check first move on pawn. Check first. Check first, then move pawn. Oh, true. Check, move pawn. It's over. Oh. Yeah, dude, that's above my pay grade. I'm not going to lie. There's a gnat as well inside of here. It's kind of bothering, driving me crazy. Hardest spot. Yeah, for sure. GG. Dang. Especially like I was under pressure as well. Like I was running out of time at this moment. So I was just like, dude, just move, 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 move. But yeah, this, this, this was actually the play. And then he goes here. I go here. And then. Wait, doesn't he just cover with pawn? Oh yeah, try it. He just covers with pawn. And then, and then what? Then you move queen to f8. Okay. And then he does what after this? Mate and one. Oh, because I go here. Oh, yeah, he does like this or so he does, he, whatever he does here, I win. Oh, dude, yeah, I didn't see that. That's like a that's like a checkmate in three. I hold up. Let's go here. Do this one, two. Three. He has no counter to this. Yeah, you can't kill my pawn in any way. Can't get my. I guess he could do this, but then. Wait, can't, yeah, he could just do that, and then it's. Yeah, then I can't do that. But then I'd have to. Oh, wait, but then I would just. My move, instead of doing that, would be this. And then he would go. I don't know. He could go. He would do. Well, then he would take this, and then that would. No, this plan. I don't think this plan would work. But we are in a better position to win the game, though, I think, if I'm like this, for sure. Yeah. Wait, no, he does that. I still could win off of that. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. We could have won. Damn. Well, the more you know. Bang! Game over. A little pawn that could... We got next game, maybe. We could uh, take it off sub uh, emote only for a little bit. Uh, let the chess chatters flow in. Sorry for disappointing you guys. I bet that was really difficult for a lot of people to look at. But that's like, uh, that's a hard thing to do. He would block queen with bishop, bishop to prevent check. Oh. Oh wait, actually, yeah, wait, no. Yeah, we're completely missing this. In an ideal world, if I do this, he just does that. I lost my queen. Easy. Lud is analyzing your game. That's very nice of him. Hope he's enjoying analyzing my game. 
Why don't you look at an analysis? Uh, you did not have a force mate. And we all deliver on our promises around here. Hog Champs 3 presented by Grip6. Look at Mr. Beast coming through in the clutch. He didn't waste any time donating the 10 grand. Plus apparently $200. I don't, maybe that's the cut, the price of admission or something. I don't know, but $10,000 <laughs> plus 200 to a charity that is unconfirmed, but this just went down on Twitter. Um, and that was because he bet Ludwig that he would donate 10K. So that's, it's pretty bleep and awesome that that just happened, Danya. Damn, girl, that is that is amazing. That is a lot of zeros, and that was a great match too. So uh, all around, awesome stuff going on. Uh, yeah, wow. I, I uh, it's, that it's, is a big number. <laughs> I can't wait to see what else happens uh, throughout this whole next couple of weeks. Um, and to remind everybody, what we're doing over these next couple of weeks, we're also raising money for charity. Uh, we still got a lot of time to reach our goal of a hundred thousand dollars. Remember, every dollar you donate is matched by Chess.com. The the company itself. In addition to the $100,000 prize fund for the players, we are putting $100,000 more toward charities that are chosen by our players. And uh, it's going to be split up based on the prizes they win. So whatever, whatever you might be interested in doing, we do appreciate it. We see some incredible charities. St. Jude's uh, chose by Mr. Beast right there, uh, just because we were talking about him. But amazing charities chosen. As I said, some of these are super, super intimate and near and dear to these people's, uh, these people's hearts, these, these celebrities' hearts here. And... Uh, and so if any of them ring a bell for you, uh, we, we saw Rain talk about his uh, charity he has with his wife to support uh, girls' education and all kinds of amazing things in Haiti um, yesterday. So anyway, consider it. We do appreciate it. Use the command charity, command donate, and chat if you want to learn more info. All right. Rocking in and rolling into our last game. We be strolling. Oh, my God, Danny. Stop rhyming. People are watching you. Wow. That was impressive. I'm impressed. I mean, if only we had logic here to evaluate that. I know. Um, we, we throw down some rhymes from time to time. Um, no, we don't actually. We you're, only you're talk chess pretty much. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. I, what you said, and I saw chat talking about it on Chess TV. Uh, exploration time was talking about how impressive Myth was there. We saw him at the break taking time to actually look at that mate pattern that I showed, right, with the F6, Queen, F8. So he's really putting in the time after his games to learn and get better. And now, now he's got a Grub to deal with. A Grub, named after Henry Grub. And uh, sometimes, Danny, I feel like the name of the opening sort of implies whether it's good or bad. And uh, let me just say that the Grub is not, on an objective level, a good opening. Um, and Henry Grub was not a bad player. Grub also means like a, a coffin in, in Russian. So it kind of represents the kind of opening this is. Grub. But he's already in a good position because Myth's last move was not very accurate. Yeah, his first move was good, for the record, everyone. When when someone, part of the reason the Grob isn't good, if we just want to talk principles, is because it's not a move that attacks the center. So principally, principally, and I am I am all over the map today with my words. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> the principles of, of grabbing the center come back, and you should play e5 or d5. So e5 was good, but then this move allows the knight to get oh. kicked around, and uh-oh, it's already it's already even worse. He's losing the knight. And that's the thing with these openings, right? They're bad from an objective standpoint, but they can be great as surprise weapons and they can contain all these vicious traps. Now, a myth, he's got to get it together and he's got to give that knight up, Danny, for as much as he can. That means taking the pawn in F2, biting the bullet, and doing as much damage as you can. Let's go listen in to what myth is talking about because he is considering that, I believe. This is bad. Um... Hmm. Okay, well, he's going to get two pawns this way. Listen, man, if I'm losing... Oh, a D4. Now, knight E3 is, a, is knight, actually a really cool move. Knight E3 is actually a super strong move, and, and black would be winning. Grab if I'm knight. losing, I'm getting two pawns out of it. <laughs> That's a really hard move. You might take on F2. Do you understand me? <laughs> if I'm losing, I'm getting two pawns out of that bad boy. Oh no. Ooh, checky. He wants to check? Oh, he goes for a check. Yeah, but now C3, that puts another piece on the under fire. Uh. Now he's in big trouble. 
Yeah. All right, who do I not want to lose? Hope he doesn't forget his queen's hanging. Yeah, a lot of stuff is hanging. Three pieces to be exact. Actually, I don't think he's going to take anything. You jinxed here. him. Oh, my lands. Oh, no. Or will he? No. Oh, oh my. No. Oh. I'm blind. Damn it, the Grob strikes yeah. again. I'm coming after you, Kevin. Borby. Oh, this game has gone down the drain Let's fast. Stream. Abort shit. <laughs> Gotta just. Gotta ab abort over. shit, boys. <laughs> abort shit. <laughs> Wow. Oh man. You know that you know that it was Kevin's influence. He's got the famous video where he drew Magnus Carlson with the grub. Kevin Bordy, if you don't know, is a good friend. I'm teasing. He's kind of the face of chess.com to the French chess community, and he does an awesome job for us here at this company. But he is responsible for this grub that unfortunately just torched myth. And this this whole idea is how dangerous the grub can be. Although Sardosh did make a huge mistake here with D4. If myth had seen 93, everyone. That would have blocked the queen and given a discovered attack to the bishop here. Um, again, we talk about discoveries. is where you move a piece, and you don't even attack with that piece. You attack with a piece behind it. Um, so that was his chance. He missed it, and unfortunately, actually blundered his queen along the way. Oh, that hurts. Oh, man. Yeah, that's so frustrating. And, you know, they all went, they went all aboardy the ship, the grab ship, including Sardosh. I mean, I'm on a roll today. Just unequivocally you're, on a roll. Just, you, are, you are spitting hot fire. Your rhymes are tight <laughs> on that mic. Um, Bang, right. Okay. Yeah, and this is just a queen down. Full queen down. Yeah. This is um, unfortunately unfortunate for Myth. And um, we know he's got good coaching. He's working with Maurice Ashley and others. Uh, but uh, anyway, like you said, that's the danger of these openings. Go ahead. And that's that's what chess is, you know. It's it's one of those things where one little thing goes wrong for you, and you got so much to take care of and so much to watch that unless you're super experienced, getting out of these situations and not blundering more pieces is one of the hardest skills in chess because you're so disconcerted. And yep. Sardo's not playing this great, but I mean he's a queen up. Basically anything wins. Yeah, it's funny because the final score is again not going to be indicative of how close this match was. That first game was moves from going the other way and seconds they were both under mutual time pressure this game here it's not to take anything away from sardosh it's good coaching from kevin bordy and it's an opening he knows well but but he, he's not necessarily playing the most accurate moves he actually even even made a big mistake earlier as we've highlighted a couple times but but um you know but he's still going to get the w here because this is just almost an impossible position for black to come back in yeah, this move bishop h3 that he played might strike people as weird, but he's going to push that g-pawn up, I think. Uh, he can also take the pawn on e5, but I think the idea was to open that bishop up by pushing the grab pawn up. Instead, he decides to take on, take on e5. Literally anything is winning here. But ultimately, I think that he's probably going to try to mate black down the h-file. He's going to play g5 and then bring the queen up to h5. Agreed, Tion. Population us. <laughs> That was a good one. Never heard yeah. that one before. Pushing the uh, pushing the uh, the awkward envelope. Over to you now. Dude, that is an envelope I'm very familiar with. And Bishop <laughs> H4 tries to put that bishop in front of the rook, but here G4 to G5 would be very very strong, opening up that file, giving up, sacrificing the grab pawn. But I think he's emotionally attached to to the grab pawn. Yeah, it's a pawn. It's a pawn you uh, fall in love with, right? You start pushing G4 and never go back. Um, yeah, brings tears to my eyes. <laughs> that pawn is, is behind many experiences that I had in my life. I've even got a G4 emote on my own Twitch channel. Super active channel. Twitch.tv slash Daniel Wrench. Definitely worth a follow. I stream all the time. Um, yeah, yeah no, you're, you're the best streamer in history. In the, the history of streamers. Best streamer. Um, the, uh, all right, Queen B3. Also not a bad move. I mean, Sardosh, as you said, can play almost anything here. Um, yeah. And as they, they say on Twitch, well, Sag or white people say? sad. Sag. Sag? But there's Sag, but I usually am not Sag. I'm more Madge. I'm going to introduce another word to the Twitch sphere. I thought it and was Sage. 
Sage? No, but it, it comes from sad, right? So it's got to be sad. But I'm going to introduce the word mad, which just means um, not sad, but mad, but on Twitch. Okay. I didn't even know. Right. And um, got a lot to learn. Yeah. My contribution to society. Actually, I stole this from a good friend who coined this word. We don't want to revisit some of the things I had to learn in, in PogChamps, too appropriate and one of the most viral clips i learned recently i'm not even going to talk about it i don't want to talk about it you don't want to talk about it well i'm pretty mad that you don't want to talk about it and yep. uh, andrea's capturing another night oh now everything is falling yeah this is just tough though i mean honestly as, as we said and we were kind of foreshadowing i had the fear i had this feeling when he played bishop before check that the the attack he would remember is the most recent one, right? That it's a very easy mis mistake to make as a chess player when you make a move and someone attacks a piece. You're mainly focused on that piece, forgetting that you already kind of got yourself in a world of trouble earlier. And so, once this queen was lost, um, as you said, it's uh, all over Red Rover. It's the myth right over. And uh, and one of the things that we noticed about the stronger players is typically. A lot of players at this level, and again, it's no shade, but this is why it's it's you know it's a learning experience. But a lot of times, from zero to fourteen, even fifteen hundred, you know, strength can vary wildly. Blunders can be made all over the place. But I think the difference between the stronger players in the event is when they get a winning position, they're very unlikely to blow it, right? And you see some of them play with the confidence of Ludwig today, the pre-move to checkmate, right? I mean, it was awesome. And I think Sardoche is going to be one of those guys where. If you're going to get them, you know, you can't, you can't go down this kind of material. Yeah. I mean, Lud definitely set the gold standard with, uh, with that technique, but the problem is, yeah, you're up a queen up a piece. And it really, the sad thing is it doesn't matter even the specific moves you make. Um, as long as you defend against the threats, uh, because, you know, because there's just too much extra stuff and you're absolutely right. I think you hit the nail on the, on the head, Danny, where, it's not that, you know, Sardos doesn't make mistakes. It's all about the consistency, though. He doesn't blunder too much. And even if he's not playing great, he's not going to shoot himself in the foot too many times. Yep. Myth is, is playing quickly, uh, or he's trying to speed up now because he's down, down to four minutes. Um, instantly played Rook back to C8. Now the Grob Pawn just moved to unleash yet another discovered attack. Apparently we're doing basic tactical themes here today, unleashing an attack behind it. Yep, there it goes. Ten moves after I thought it would be played, but he does it. And I'm afraid Myth might take that pawn. See, that's another thing where you tunnel vision the thing that's hanging. But that's what where I've been impressed by Myth. And, well, of course, I have to jinx him, as always. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. He is, his logic is impressive. That doesn't take anything away from him. Yep. Oh, man. Well, he's, uh, we're going to have interviews with the players, obviously, so don't go anywhere. The day is not over yet. We will check in with them. And again, the, uh, the PogChamps event is young and still a lot, a lot of chess to be seen from these guys. Let's tune in with yeah. Myth here and get his final thoughts as, as this game comes to a close. Chat, help me. I need help. Listen, if there are any chess.com viewers, send help. Send help. I'm down bad. I don't know if they have my audio on, but look at my lips. I'm down horrendous. I am down bad. Send backup. Send the CIA. Send the FBI. Send the, the men in black. I don't send somebody. Oh no. Oh, death is death is among us, boys. The ship, the ship is sinking. All has failed us this game. Things aren't looking too hot. All right, woman, woman, and uh, woman and children first. Get in awesome. the get in the rafts. <laughs> get in the rafts. <laughs> Take refuge. Yeah. This is a fitting, a fitting uh, way of describing the situation. Huh? Oh! 
Oof, that's another I nasty lost. check. Then so there's gonna it's be over. Remote. Boom, he okay. goes here. <gasps> no, nah, it's not over. Oh, it's over. No. <laughs> not over. <laughs> nice. No, it's over. Yeah, I think so there's just enough pieces here. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, well, again, the final scoreboard and the way that game went, I mean... Some of the games can be misleading like that. Not not to say, again, Sardosh isn't a super strong player, but it definitely was kind of off the rails in an unfair way for Myth early, and there was there was no slowing down the uh, the train there, right? No, for sure. Sardosh is, is grinding, is coming through. He's consistent. He's solid. He's he's a, a serious player, and uh, Myth, uh, Myth did the very best that he could, and that first game was super competitive, Danny. Uh, he's going to uh, he's going to fire some bullets in this tournament for sure. All right. Well, there may be no slowing down Sardosh, but there's also no slowing down Grip Six, our official presenting sponsor. Uh, reminder: you you, you got to go to gripsix.com right now. You can also go to go.chess.com/grip6. But either way, you're going to use the PogChamps20 promotion code to get 20% off. Um, I highly recommend the socks. I've had no shame about it. People don't believe me. I tweeted earlier before the match started that uh, that I was wearing the socks. Um, but again, they're a belt company first. The belts are awesome. No flap, no bulk. Right there, the belt is comfy. Head over to Grip6.com. You'll get a chance to win that custom chess set. Don't go anywhere. We have interviews. We'll be right back. You will be surprised. Other times you surprise your opponents. Um, but overall... Um, I think, for instance, here, I know this is this is already like it's not pleasant, but where would you move the knight? What other squares do you have for the knight? Um, D5? Would that be a better square for the knight than E4? going back? E4? Mm -hmm. D5 is safe. E4 is fine um or um g4 yes yeah, so you have g4 e4 d5 let's compare these two because those seem to be the most natural when it comes to going toward the center you place your knight immediately in the center so that would make sense that we are going to one of these squares but one is a lot better than the other um if you have your knight here, and I want you to visualize it, yeah. because knight jumps are those tricky ones and we can still always practice. If the knight is on e4, can you find a move for white that would make sure that that knight is attacked and can not jump to any square with that being captured? We want to trap the knight on e4. So what, what would be white's move? Yes, yeah, I want you to picture the, the knight... Uh, your knight on e4, and I'd like okay. you to find a move for white that would trap it, the knight. Because it looks like a good spot, but there's a move, a very annoying one by white, that would attack it and capture it. I don't think the knight is safe on any square after going there. Uh, but you're saying what, what is the attack? It, would it be just... Yeah, pawn. The, that's that's the solution. But you you were immediately understanding that oh, like from here it can cannot go to any of these squares. So this is something to take into account when you choose where to place your pieces. Is that once it's there, does it have where to go? And in this case, this knight has no jumps. It has no moves. So as active as it looks. There, there will be games where the knight is very well placed there, but that's why everything has to has to be observed in the context of the rest of the pieces. That knight could be a beast in another game, and in this game, it's a very clumsy piece because it has nowhere to jump to. Okay. So you are right. D3 attacks the knight, and wherever the knight goes, it's trapped. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about knight to d5? Is it the same situation or do you have moves from d5 for the knight? If in case it's attack, because white could attack it, right? Right. Uh, here. Um 
yeah, there are more places for it to go. Mm -hmm. So it means that our knight is not in trouble on d5, right? Yeah. Amazing. So for next time, even if the position is unpleasant, because in this case, normally your knight is not chased away, just try to try to see what are some of the better alternatives. Because even if it's not the knight, but any other piece, if you have already developed a piece, try not to put it back to the initial square, because then it's then it's something that didn't achieve anything move, for yeah. us. Yeah, so it took us one move to get the knight out to a six and another move to go back, which means that you spent two moves and the knight is on the initial square. That's why these moves, um, as much as we can, we try to avoid them because it loses. Remember when I was trying to explain to you what is time in chess and not on the clock, but time in the position. Yeah. This is time because it a was tempo, two moves. Yeah. A tempo, yes. It was two moves to move the knight back and forth, and it's on the same square. So you're going to need a third move mm -hmm. to move it again. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. I like, I appreciate you helping me go through the the possibility of if a blunder ha like this happens again. Because that's, yeah. that's a type of training I hadn't even... Like, I, I feel like a lot of times I look at my games and I, I figure out what would have been the best move instead of the blunder but mm -hmm. that's like next level to think about what's the next move after you've made a blunder yes it's important that just because this move i'm sure that in this moment you sense that oh something is not quite right it's not exactly our setup but even if it happens to you it's not the end of the world so there's always there's always a way to put up more resistance you should always try to find the strongest response even when the position is not the coolest not the nicest it's this is far from being decisive it's just an unpleasant move and yes he has even if you have the knight here he would have these tricks that he pushes the pawn and the rook is attacked so it's not easy to counter these kind of surprise attacks mm -hmm. it comes out of the blue mm -hmm. it's literally move five and you are already being attacked by all of these pieces the pawn and the, the bishop so <laughs> um, i just need you to 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 understand this part too yes what you said that even though there will be occasions when your opponent surprises you. Sometimes in the opening, sometimes in the middle game, it's also possible that you miss an idea in the middle game at a later stage. So it's, it's not necessarily an opening preparation thing. It's more about just the mentality that what I told you about okay moves, it's also okay to miss ideas. It's also okay to miss moves. So I just need you to be like super chill about, oh, I missed it. Okay, my bad, but next page, blank page, this is the situation. How do I put up the most resistance possible? Got it. Okay. Yeah. And well, the way we are learning about these, for instance, these night jumps to compare them, it's not only for this exact position. I just want you to, to use this kind of thinking overall, in general, in your games, because you may not have this position in your next matches, but you could have a similar situation when it's a choice of where do I place the knight? Do I want to go back? Or will I try to move it to a more active square, especially if it's the center? And what's the difference between e4 and d5? Where is the knight safe? We want to keep our pieces safe. d5. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent job. I think I was being told that we were on the, the main broadcast. So hello to everybody. Uh, yes. Hi. <laughs> I saw that in my chat too and I was like... <laughs> These like these uh these uh put you on blast in front of a hundred thousand people without warning. Yeah, we got to be on our best behavior at all times. Yeah, of course it's D five. <laughs> you just spotted ninety five, so I'm, I think we were in the right moment of like yeah, we can be talking about about series in the meantime, and then for those five minutes something instructive. <laughs> No, you're doing an amazing job, Michelle, and we are here to learn from this game because it wasn't an easy one. And after e6, again, let's say you already had the knight there. Let's say this is bad, but I want you to, again, put up the most resistance possible. What's the main threat of your opponent? Okay, so main threat is bishop takes on h8. So mm -hmm. my thought, now that this has happened, a, a better move could have been f6 to get one possible pawn out of the way of 
this annoying pawn on the sixth rank and also block um, the bishop. Excellent. Blocks the diagonal, saves the rook, and steps Rain out Rain actually, this. I believe, was like, you should have gone eight, <laughs> f6. And I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't Rain. hear this part when he told you, but I, I, I heard some Maybe of the other Maybe that was, banter. we were, you know, I don't know when yeah. we were live or not on the main yeah. thing. Yesterday. I was switching back and forth because I was like, on your channel, I can hear your thought process. I was mainly watching your stream. Don't, oh. don't, tell, don't tell the show I'm going to be on the show tomorrow and such, but like, oh, I, can't wait to I see wanted you to see it hosting. from your perspective. <laughs> I think I'll be on, on Thursday too, when you're playing. No, 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 that's no pressure <laughs> because it's the same. It's the same tournament. And I would be watching regardless whether I'm casting or not. I'm watching. So you did very well yesterday. But yes, F6, that saves the rook. And then this pawn alone is not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. What's your next move if your opponent doesn't touch this pawn? If that pawn stays there, what do you do? Let's say I move here. And we are back here, PogChamps3. We're now joined by both of our players. We've got Myth, we've got Andreas on audio. Thanks for being with us again, guys. Hello. Hi, um, Myth. Hi, everyone. Myth? Good games? Yeah, yeah. Myth, let me let me start with you. We got we got a, the chessboard up. What was a critical position in the in in the first game, which was a super intense game. You both got under time pressure. Danya and I were super nervous over here. We had no idea what was gonna happen. Take, take us through your thought process, though, because when the queen went to a5, I was singing your praises, Myth, that a lot of times in your games, you immediately are looking at your opponent's threats first, which a lot of people don't do that. They do the opposite. But then after that, you did see that you could take b7, but kind of got away from it and dismissed it. Eventually, eventually you went with a different move. Like, what? Why, why did you end up not taking the b7 pawn when you first saw it? Hold on, we, we've lost we've lost your audio myth. One second. Oh, sorry. All there right, you I'm, go. I'm here. Sorry. Say um, that again. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It's okay. Uh, honestly, it happens that way sometimes. Yeah, I dish um, out. I dish it out to inexperience and just second guessing myself. The pressure of being, you know, in, in the tournament setting in the tournament event, and uh, yeah, I think that's all. That's all I really chop it down to. Uh, I don't think there's any other excuse. You know, inexperience and and, and uh, second guessing myself, not being confident in the move that I think is right when I think it's right. You know, right. yeah. The first game was so intense. Like I was, I actually didn't even see the rook. I was so so stressed and panicked when when you played so aggressive at first. Yeah. And I focused on my plan, and I felt like I could defend if you would commit to my my king. And I was like, okay, well, I will focus on my things. And I will let him do stuff. I I hope it works, but finally it works. But I I really think you could you you were already close, like maybe some some ten hours of training to to beat me on the first game for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the second yeah. game, sadly, you had no preparation for this grub, and it was it was a bit harder, I guess. Yeah. But before this we even game. talk about the like grub in, in this first game, uh, Danya and I were 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 on the edge of our seat right here. There was there was almost a potential tactic with Queen C8 and F6. Donna, you want yeah. you want to take us through that? Yeah, so and and Myth, I was impressed with the fact that you were analyzing this afterwards. So this check on C8 could follow. And then uh Andreas, maybe you saw that. Then the king runs to H7, which is not the only move, but then you play F6 check. And uh Black can take the bishop, and that's the saving grace because if Black goes G6, then the queen slides over to F8, and that's a lobster pincer. Yeah, idea that's what I will do, so you know this was close until the very end and uh, andreas you played very well in the final stage of the game to sort of make sure that your king was safe but it was intense as we heck. had no we had no time actually we were both at two minutes or one uh, and <laughs> it was so stressful to actually yeah. find the good yeah. move and not blunder in this panic yeah. situation like wow same. At that point in the game, I remember even like at this very phase, I was looking at the time and I was like, oh man, 30 seconds left. I just got to move something. And I don't have time to like, I, w I don't think I was, um, I don't think I'm, I was like good enough. I literally told myself like, I'm not good enough to, to come up or think about the right thing at the right time. I just need to move so I don't yeah, I, just lose off time. At and, the time and, we had one minute yeah. left, I, I just, I just uh, talked about my, 
my coach did stream top of me. He told me just move the pieces and it will go well. So I just yeah. move the pieces and. <laughs> well, speaking of, of your coach, Sardosh, before we move on from that, obviously, uh, Mr. Blitzstream himself, Kevin Bordy, gets credit yeah. for the grab. This is uh, of course, yeah. It it worked yeah, out here, is... obviously. Man, crazy he, just, opening. he just played against Magnus Carlsen himself with <laughs> maybe 600 Elo <laughs> under him and he actually beat him with the grub. So I guess this is some, some fun to play. And actually, I, I learned chess with that opening. So it forced me to play really tactic, really mostly with tactics. So I can't really just position at my pieces and win. I need to find a way to crush my opponent. So this is how I learned chess. This is why I struggle so much with close position, and this is why I force myself to play London system to actually grind and learn, learn chess. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> I think that's not a bad idea to actually play grub to learn chess. <laughs> you might be the first, but that's that's really cool. I guess if it's good enough for Magnus, it's good enough for Myth. So Myth, right. you're in good company with the world champion. The grub is a, the grub is hard to handle, <laughs> um, but. <laughs> You know, seriously, man, I, I know you said yourself, chalk it up to inexperience, but, but I mean that in a good way, that there were a lot of things. We listened in on you a lot, and there were a lot of times your thought process was, like, totally on point. And, mm -hmm. I, and I just want to say that because there were, there were moments where, and that game came down to the wire, where we were, we were singing your praises, and I know that, you know, where this event is heading, I just, uh, every, every time we, we watch you stream here and play chess, it's, you're just getting better every time, man. So just want to say that. Thank you. This man, Paul Champs Four, and our next match. I have a few days, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, nose to the grindstone, and hopefully, you know, I could pull off a few dubs against Nico. But then, you know, it, 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 from here and until then, I like chess as a game. I really want to stick to it, and uh, maybe, maybe I'll see you guys next year. You know, yeah. But it's a, it's a lot <laughs> of fun. Absolutely, the way you're doing right now, for sure. Great games, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot for those games. Bye, guys. <laughs> GG. Okay. All right. Well, um, you heard it. Everyone's already talking about Pod Champs Four. I mean, first of all, it may <laughs> not be next year. Maybe, maybe it'll be this year. But I will say that uh, mm. there's, there's been so much positivity from this, especially this particular group. And um, I already know a lot mm -hmm. of them off stream have been talking that way, um, and uh, and on stream as well. So Cardosh takes it, continues to impress, and that was our final score of today. But let's preview tomorrow. Speaking of someone who's already been talking about Pog Champs 4, Pokey Main has been obsessed with chess. She'll be back against XQC. But to kick things off, we have Rubius and Agranu, Nico and Benji Fishy, OMGs are snaps. Danya, which match are you most looking forward to tomorrow? Well, I've, I've got to go with XQC against Pokey Main. The others are going to be super interesting too, but uh, I'm so excited to see how much XQC has improved. And I've heard about Pokey Main's grinding as well. So, Danny, that's going to be a marquee matchup. Uh, and uh, that's, I'm going to have my, my eyes glued to the screen. No, agreed. And, you know, obviously XUC got the job done against Rubius with the 2-0 victory, but those games were super mm -hmm. close, right? I mean, anyone who watched yesterday, right. uh, if you didn't, shame on you, check out the VOD. But uh, Rubius, XUC, Rubius even had a mate one. It could have gone any way. So I, I think Pokey and, and XUC are going to have a crazy match. I, I'm with you. That That's the one that's uh, hard to turn away from. Of course, all the others look crazy, too. Nico and Benji Fishy and Rubius and Negronio. So speaking of crazy, man, it's wow. been a wild day. How you feeling? Wow. Four hours, three and a half hours have gone by in a, in a flash. We've got so many ups and downs. And I have to second what you said earlier, Danny, just amazing high quality performances all across the board, whether by the favorites or by um, first time players. I, I think everybody just put their hearts out on the line today and produced some amazing chess. Yeah, and I know we keep talking about it, um, but it has been something that I think was partly inspired by the Queen's Gambit. I was teasing Jimmy, Mr. Beast, about it, but there's a there was something about the 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 vibe of of coming into this event that it wasn't just that people were inspired to play chess. I think I think the series it was like people were inspired to learn and get better, and we've seen that, and we've seen so many people just diving into lessons and coaching, and it, and it's been a ton of fun. So it makes me think that where we're going from now to the end of this event over the next couple of weeks. Um, we're going to see everyone continue to get better. Maybe Ludwig's right. Maybe that consolation bracket will just be nuts, right? Regardless of who's in it in terms of how good they've gotten. So um, anyway, 
Amazing stuff. Want to give one last shout out to all of our subscribers. There's been a ton of you today and tons of people also throwing in some cash toward our charity goals, which are big. We're going to continue to get there. We really appreciate your support. And uh, we hope to con see, continue seeing that being driven up to the team, the crew, working hard, all of our mods, hardly working, working hard. No, they're all working hard. Um, to my partner. <laughs> yeah. Well, to my partner as well. So, you know. Who's gonna who's gonna be the first to say uh, mean things about the other? That's the question. No one's gonna say mean things. Say mean things. Um, thanks, thanks to everyone. Well, that was a lot of fun, Danny. It, it was a lot of fun. Thanks to everyone for tuning in, and we will see you tomorrow for another day of Pog Champs Three, presented by Grip Six. So what you want? And something um, Anna Cramling showed to me. Um, you know, was like the left to right scanning of the board to double check protected pieces, which in this game, all of the games was very helpful to me. And what I think I learned here is I need to be doing that earlier because I thought we're in the opening, blah, blah, blah. Not like, yeah. not like the opening is full autopilot, but I definitely don't think to use that until I'm in like, not like a pickle, but like, what what move should I make next? I don't know. Okay, let me start by scanning things. And I think like it's just a good it's like doing your dishes, you know? <laughs> I just need to do the dishes. <laughs> I'm glad that she told you about this. I'm gonna learn. I'm I think I'm gonna apply that too from from Anna because I also say about the unprotected pieces, but I think it's it's a good idea that if you have this so so much of a method that it's like a scan from left to right yeah that's new to me too so i'm learning because the the unprotected piece is extremely important the king and unprotected pieces I, and when we when we did our puzzle training at the very start and just in general to spot motives and ideas i i think you remember that i told you about the the king Mm -hmm. unprotected pieces and the unfortunately placed pieces those three categories but yeah. i like that from now on you're gonna scan the board from the opening on because you are right it can be as early as move four five six that something is hanging so it's good if you if you pay more attention to unprotected pieces i agree queen to c2 would have been a good idea <laughs> even even like this again mistakes will happen but it's good that you then adjust to the new situation new situation being oh yeah we we lost the pawn but the rook is hanging yeah. So you move the knight away because that's the only way to guard it. Even if it loses a second pawn, the rook is priority. So you did the right thing by moving the knight. Queen takes c3 and bishop b5 check. You realize that now your bishop is hanging. Mm -hmm. So you moved it to b5. I think that's a good reaction um, because it wasn't so easy to guard it. What would happen if you guard this bishop with the queen? And I'm not going to move it. I just want you to visualize it. What's wrong with that move? Rook's hanging. The rook is hanging. Yeah. Our queen is too busy. Our, our, our queen cannot handle everything. The same would be about queen c2. And these are very easy blunders. This would be actually very easy to blunder because when something is guarded as of now, then you feel like it's not in danger and you could easily move your queen away to guard something that's now in danger, so you end up losing more than what you have protected. I'm glad that you have spotted it instantly, so we, <laughs> we ain't blundering. We ain't blundering that rook. Bishop b5 is one of the best reactions for that reason. Even our knight is pinned, so you didn't have much of a choice. Bishop b5 to get out of this uh, very dangerous situation for the bishop. Bishop to d7. Uh, here you had the choice to take, but instead...